I sent you to life in confinement without parole. That's f***ing horse shit. You do whatever the f*** you want, Why are they shutting my mic off? On the federal witness of the United States federal government, I demand some goddamn respect, you All I did was truck pass on property. Ma'am, you gotta create the community that you want to live in. Bond Court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. Good afternoon folks, my name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if there's probable cause for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred, more likely than not you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent to these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state attorney's office is able to prove the allegations against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this afternoon, that is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit of the warrant which led to your arrest. I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same, or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be. If you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. I now need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Y'all saw me swear firm, tell truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, you can step forward to the podium. Maxwin Beinart. Afternoon, Miss. What's your date of birth? June 4th, 89. All right, Max. And this is a violation of uh, a probable cause arrest for a violation of probation. There is probable cause. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD. A bond in the VOP, of course, is no bond. I'm going to have you back in court on June 16th. The public defender will come see you before that, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Hunt. Hello, Anna. What's your date of birth? April 3rd, 85. All right, Anna, uh, you have a charge today of trespass. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, public defender, please. All right, state. Uh, Your Honor, if you would like to resolve it today, it would be an adjudication, 15 days, jail, fines, and costs. Okay. Uh, Anna State says you can take 15 days if you want to resolve this today. You don't have to. It's just an option if you want to take it. And, Judge, um, I'm not sure. I, th I think she's yes. in drug court. My yes. Respect. Oh, it's going to, she is in drug court. Um, so you want her not to do this? Try it. That's up to her, but I, I don't know whether it will have an effect on it. Can I send this back? Can I send this to drug court so Judge Barbie can decide if it matters or not? And if it doesn't, he can send it back to me? You're in drug court, right, Dave? Sure. You're, you're in there, right? Yeah. I mean, that way he'll know what's going on because because if it's going to be a problem, then everything's going to go scattering. If it's not, then... Okay. Um, they, they got court this Thursday. You can do that. Uh, all right, and I'm going to leave. Uh, we're we're concerned about uh, taking a plea affecting your situation in drug court. What I'll do is leave the bond at a thousand dollars. I'll send this uh, back to court on the 19th of May, which is this Thursday. I'll send it up to Judge Barbie with your drug court cases. If it matters to him, uh, then we'll figure out what he wants to do. You can always take a plea up there if you want to. If they don't take your plea there, they'll send you back to me. All right. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Caitlin Lane. This morning, Caitlin, what's your date of birth? 52792. Caitlin, you're hearing a warrant that was signed by Judge uh, Toner. Apparently, he thinks you failed to appear in his uh, court on two counts of possession of controlled substance, one count criminal mischief, one count marijuana, one count paraphernalia. Uh, as to those charges, Caitlin, were you currently represented? Um, yes. Did you have a PD? Yes, um, Sharkey. Okay. You want to stay with Mr. Sharkey? Yes. All right. Judge Toner, unfortunately, has asked that I hold you without bond. I'm going to send you back to see him on the 16th of June. Mr. Sharkey will come see you before then, okay? Your Honor, can we do the 2nd of June? The 2nd of June. Yeah, that's all right with me. We're going to move you up to the 2nd of June, Caitlin. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Janelle O'Connor. Hi, sir. Afternoon, Miss. What's your date of birth? 1-22-91. Janelle, you're hearing a warrant signed by Judge Tony found probable cause for a violation of probation. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Um, I would like the public defender for now, but I'm going to try to hire back on my private attorney. That's very good. I'll appoint the PD for now. Uh, Judge Toner has ordered you held without bond. I can't change that. I'll send you back to see him on the 16th of June. If you're able to mm -hmm. hire a private lawyer, make sure they know about that date, okay? Um, I just have a question, sir. I'm violated for leaving the county without permission to go to rehab. I've been in rehab for the past two months. I completed my rehab. I'm an IOP now. Um, so I was just wondering if there's a way to do a sooner court date so I can continue my treatment. Um, literally, I'm doing the right thing. There, if, uh, I would if I could, but I can't. I, I don't have any authority to do anything with it, uh, Janelle, other than tell you what the warrant says and send you back to see Judge Toner, all right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Charlisa Rice. How you doing, sir? Pretty good, uh, Mr. I want to be. I want to be not not guilty. I want time served, but I want to know. Uh, Appoint the public defender. Can I have a bond and how much time are you willing to give me? Uh, I don't know. Is there an offer, Steve? Not time, Your Honor. Um, she was. How much time are you willing to give me? In the so? case in yep. April. Okay. Uh, we don't have an offer for you today, Miss Rice. Uh, tell you what, I'll uh, set your bond at $100. I'll have you back in court on the 10th of June. If you get out, go see the PD, okay? Okay. okay. I, I want to know if, if I get out, can, can you send me comments from my dad and mom? I can't, I can't send you. Charlize, I can't send you anywhere. I just set your bond. That's all I can do. Oh, okay. Thank all you, right. sir. You bet. Thank you, sir. All right. Megan Richards. Hey, Megan, what's your date of birth? 3882. Megan, you're here on a warrant that was signed by Judge Einemann. He found probable cause for one count of grand theft. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? A public defender. I'll point to PD. You state any history. Uh, yes, Your Honor. She has an open case on Blake for uh, petty theft with two priors. Uh, 2021, she was adjudicated guilty on a petty theft. 2021, adjudicated guilty on another petty theft. And Megan, I have an address for you. Uh, is it County Road 522 in Bushnell? Yes. How long have you been there? Um, I've been there about seven months. All right. Are you working these days? No, I'm not working. I get oh. alimony from okay. my ex-husband. Okay. I'll set you bond at $1,000. I'll have you back in court on June 16th. If you get out, make sure you contact the PD right away, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Bradley Baylor. <coughs> Afternoon, Bradley. What's your date of birth? 11303. Uh, Bradley, I have, uh, first I have a warrant for failing to appear signed by Judge Toner on a burglary of a conveyance. Then I have a burglary dwelling. Then I have four counts of unlawful possession of stolen debit or credit card and then one count of unlawful use of personal identification. Um, 
State to the three new charges, post state the date of offense on the old charge. Mm -hmm. I think they must. Most likely, but I got double check. All right, I've got an address for you on Tumbleweed Trail in Brooksville. Is that where you live? No, sir. How long have you been there? I live on 10309. Um, okay. Oh, I see. All right. How long have you been at the new address? A couple of days now. Ah, okay. Are you working? Yes, sir. What do you do? I just got a job at Taco Bell. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and set bonds on everything state, but uh, you might want to pass it up the line. I mean, yeah. it's a weird situation because he was FDA on the old case. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure what the situation with an RCO is, but they might want to look at it when he gets back to court. Bradley, you want the public defender? Yes, sir. All right. And state, other than this, any adult history? So, Brad, here's what we're going to do. The, on the warrant, on Judge Toner's warrant, uh, he set your bond at 4000 I can't change it when he sets it. That one's going to go back to court on the 16th of June. On uh, the personal ID, I'm going to leave that bond at 5000 That's going back on the 16th of June. On the four counts of unlawful possession, I'll set those at 2000 each. Uh, that's also going back on the 16th of June. And on the burglary, at 5000 also going back on the 16th of June. Looks like your total is about 22000 If you're able to bond out, Brad, contact the PD right away. If you can't get out, uh, they'll come see you before you go to court, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you. Tim Cuba. Tim, what's your date of birth? 9293. Uh, Tim, you're hearing a warrant that was signed by Judge Scaglione. Uh, he found probable cause for three charges, ag stalking, uh, misdemeanor possession of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Counsel, how are you today? Judge, I'm good. For the record, Nick Fricarello on behalf of Mr. Cuba. Judge, he, uh, he was actually out on bond. In fact, we have a pretrial in front of you on June 2nd. Um, these are things that didn't occur when he was out. They, they're prior things. I spoke to the detective last week. Okay. As soon as we heard there was a warrant, I had him turn himself in. Um, so we're asking the court to set a bond on the okay. felony and... Uh, Judge, I think the other bonds, uh, for some reason, got raised. They were like a thousand, another two thousand. I'm not sure what happened with that. Um, I, on the warrant, they say a thousand. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, Judge Scaglione only bumped them up. Fair what happened like with that? that? Okay. Uh, he knows I'm going to do whatever I want anyway. Good, good, good. Uh, good. And state what other history does Tim have? Uh, two thousand fifteen was a whistle on a trespass. Two thousand fourteen was pulled on possession of cannabis. Check just so you know, there's currently an injunction out with the victim. They've had no contact. This has been going on for a while, and there's a parenting plan about to happen. I think we're pretty close to it. Okay. To getting that. Uh, done, Tim, I've got an address for you on Ancho Avenue. Is that where you live? No, sir. Where do you live now? Uh, 2142 Virginia Lee. Okay. How long have you been on Virginia Lee? A uh, year. Are you working these days? Yes, sir. What do you do? Um, Self-employed at the time. Use of repair. Okay. And then counsel, uh, so as far as the parenting plan, are they have an open court in the circuit court somewhere, an open case? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Timothy, I'm going to set the bond on the egg stocking at 5000 on the two misdemeanors of 1000 It's a total of 7000 um, As far as contact is concerned, I'm going to leave the contact pursuant to the circuit court order, whatever, okay, whatever sure. they order. But, but understand, Tim, uh, that, that you need to be very careful because 
any reports of, of unwelcome or unwanted or unauthorized contact from Lexi is going to get you back in jail without a bond. you understand that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. been pretty clear with him about that, Judge. I bet you have. Okay. Uh, okay, and then it looks like this is all coming back June 16th. You're back in front of me on the 2nd. On the 2nd, we're in front of you. And yep. then the 16th in front of Judge Toner, it looks like. Okay, right. thank, thank you, Judge. Frankie Cockle. Hey, Frankie, date of birth? 929-68. All right. So I've got a warrant signed by Judge Vergara. She found probable cause for a bird dwelling. A warrant signed by Judge Scaglione. He found probable cause for a petty theft. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll point the PD, State. Sure, Your Honor, when I came in yesterday, they had me on a trespass and a, and a the, uh, petty theft. Now I just went up to a burglary since yesterday. I, I'm just reading the warrant. It says burglary. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Is there any way we resolve it? No, no, it? no. That burglary is a felony, uh, Frankie. They don't let me handle serious cases like that. I'm just a county court judge. So yes, hang sir. on. We'll set you a bond. So this month he was adjudicated guilty in the battery out of Pasco where he received, I believe, two years of probation. Um, I've been in Pasco, same address for like 45 years. <laughs> okay, Frankie, 2021, hang on. 2021, he was adjudicated guilty on a criminal mischief. Uh, 2021, adjudicated guilty on a petty theft. Uh, adjudicated guilty on a duelist. 2020, adjudicated guilty on a duelist. 2018, adjudicated guilty on a duelist. 2014, reckless driving, adjudicated guilty. 2014, adjudicated guilty for leaving the scene. 2011, uh, GB battery withhold. Uh, and then 2003, resisting withhold. <laughs> Are you working these days? Yeah, sir. Okay. Well, my wife was a cleaning server, but we're kind of separated, so. Okay. Uh, on the burglary, I'll set the bond at 5000 On the petty theft at one. The petty theft is coming back on the 10th of June, the burglary on the 16th of June. If you get out, make sure you contact the public defender right away, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Taylor Howard. How you doing this morning? Pretty good. What's your date of birth? 12 27 1995. All right. Taylor, you're here on a warrant signed by Judge Anime. You found probable cause for one count of grand theft. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I'd like the PD, sir. I'll point the PD, State. Yes, 2021, you adjudicate guilty on a petty theft. Uh, 2022 adjudicated guilty on burglary, two counts of burglary, uh, possession of burglary tools, criminal mischief, and a petty theft. Uh, those credit time served, no probation. Uh, also adjudicated guilty of possession of paraphernalia and a petty theft. Uh, 2020 adjudication was held on a possession of oxymorphone and a no valid. 2020 adjudicated guilty on possession of paraphernalia. All right, good. Taylor, I've got an address for you on County Road 321 in Bushnell. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Uh, my, my family's lived there their whole life, but I've been living there since I got out of jail, uh, March 31st. All uh, right. You working these days? Yes, sir. What do you do? I work, uh, doing landscaping in the villages. Okay. All right, Taylor, I set you about at 1,000. I'll have you back in court on the 16th of June. If you get out, make sure you contact the PD, okay? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Jason Hunt. <laughs> Afternoon, Jason, what's your date of birth? 8-18-1978. All right, Jason, I got two warrants. They're both signed by Judge Toner. They're both VOPs. Uh, as to the violation of probation, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? The public defender, Your Honor, I, I showed up to class. They violated me because they said I didn't stay active in the class that they said was part of my probation. But I showed up. They told me I couldn't stay because I couldn't pay. I didn't have the money. I got four kids. I got out of jail. I started over with nothing. And I've been busting my butt for five months. I got a job finally. And now because I can't pay the class, I got violated and stuck back in jail. I yeah, Jason, I, obviously I don't know. I'm just telling you I got warrants, and that's what I'm doing. I, I'm not allowed to change the bond, unfortunately. All I can do is tell you the bond is no bond to point the PD and tell you you're going back to see Judge Toner on the 16th of June, all right? Yeah. Thank you. Evan Lefko. I 
Afternoon, everyone. What's your date of birth? 9-1490. Having the charge is violation of an injunction. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, PD, sir. But my grandfather was having my grandfather was having a open heart surgery today, and I just went out in town just to go see him, so I can come be there this morning to see him, or before he went to the hospital or uh, did any surgery. And I had permission from him, and who was staying there? Yeah, you got a little. Okay, Evan. Uh, Evan, I, Evan, I'll stop you right there. I, I, this is this is not the time to sort the facts out. That's why when I started, I said, you know, be careful about talking about the facts. Uh, the standard here is probable cause, which is a low standard. Uh, before the state can ever prove you're guilty, they'll have to come up with evidence that proves that beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. Our only, our only job here today is to uh, figure out uh, what a reasonable bond should be. So hang on one second, and I'll do that. State? Yes, yes sir. Uh, 2021, he was adjudicated guilty on a trespass. 2021, adjudicated guilty on violation of DV injunction with the same victim. Uh, 2020, adjudicated guilty on a battery, a different victim. 2020 adjudicated guilty on leaving the scene and a no valid. 2020 adjudicated guilty on possession of cannabis, possession of cocaine, possession of paraphernalia, and resisting without violence. 2017 adjudicated guilty on marijuana possession. 2013 adjudicated guilty on the bullets. And 2008 adjudicated guilty on the DUI and a no valid. All right. Evan, are you working these days? I'm disabled, sir. All right, so. So Evan, I'm gonna I'm gonna set your bond at five hundred dollars. Condition is that you abide by that injunction, which means you're not going anywhere near uh, two three zero nine Dewitt Drive. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Because if you're there again, uh, and I find out about it, you'll be back in jail without bond. Do you understand that? Well, what about with my grandpa and surgery and everything else? I'm not kidding. There's no reason. If, if I hear you're anywhere near there, you're going to jail without bond. Are we clear? Yes, sir. All right. I'll have you back in court on the 10th of June. Very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, right? All right. Thank you. Christopher McCuller. Afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? 6582. Right. Chris, you're here. No, you're here on a charge of uh, uh, burglary of a conveyance with a battery. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Defender. I'll point to PD, State. Uh, 2020, he was adjudicated guilty on a disorderly. 2010, adjudicated guilty on a DUI. And 2004, adjudicated guilty on a dual <laughs> I don't want to see if I can get an ROR and that way I don't lose everything I worked my whole life for. Okay, well, Chris, this uh, charge that you have is, is a first-degree felony. It's punishable by life in prison. So so you've got a serious right. situation and you're not getting an ROR because of that. I know people don't understand that when it happens, but what you did is punishable by life in prison. So just hang on. What, by reaching into my car? Sure, there please. you go. They, see, now you just admitted a first-degree felony under no, oath on the record. That's okay, you're I'm not listening. I know you don't think it's serious, but you just admitted a first-degree felony on the record under oath. Right, I got so you. So it's time to listen. Being angry and indignant isn't helping. The state attorney's office is now going to use this recording as proof that you committed the crime. All right. So shut up and stop digging a hole. Yes, sir. Set your bond at $2,000. Condition is that you not have any contact with the other gentleman, Mr. Robbins. I'll have you back in court on June 16th. Uh, make sure you go see the public defender when you get out. There may not be anything they can do for you, but give it a shot. <laughs> Albert Pelletier. Afternoon, Albert. What's your date of birth? 7-14-61. Albert, the charge driving under the influence. There's probable cause for that charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I'm going to try and get counsel. All right. State any history? Uh, no prior convictions, Your Honor. Right. Elmer, I got an address for you on Harmony Drive in Hudson. Is that where you live? Yeah, it's my relatives. All right. You working these days? 
non disabled since uh, right. Elmer, 2000. And, uh, I'll, and I'll set your bond, Elmer, at $500. I'll have you come back and see me on June 10th. Uh, if you hire a lawyer, make sure you tell them about that date, okay? The 10th? The 10th of June, yep. Thank you. Thank you. Justin Pine. Hello, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Justin. Date of birth? 05-1801. Justin, you're here on a warrant signed by me. Uh, I found probable cause for violation of probation. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, I'd like the public defender. Uh, I, I have a question, though. Okay. I've been in uh, jail in Pasco for 45 days on this. How many? Uh, I was 45, 42, I think, or 43. Okay. But uh, I'm uh, asking for a bond, please, so I can go home to my family. Okay. Well, they're, they're looking for 90, uh, uh, Justin. So... I, I certainly, if that winds up being the case, you'd get credit for all those 43 days. But on a 90 say sentence, you got to serve 75, which leaves you 32 short. If you want to accept that this morning, you, or this afternoon, you sure can. Um, otherwise, I'm not likely to give you a bond because it's a violation of probation. Uh, but that's that's up to you. If you want to accept the uh, the 90 days, I'd give you credit for 43. You'd have, like I said, about 32 left to do. Uh, if you want to talk to an attorney before you do anything, you sure can do that. Uh, I'll accept that, sir. Very good. You understand by entering an admission to a violation of probation, you give up the right to have a trial to the court, the right to confront the witnesses against you, right to have a lawyer. But you want to give up those rights so we can resolve this today? Yes, sir. Very good. Case number 20, MM2584. Uh, do you admit that you violated your probation? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'll accept the admission, find it was freely and voluntarily made, revoke and terminate the probation unsuccessfully, adjudicate you guilty of the underlying charge, sentence you to 90 days, I'll give you credit for 43. Uh, $100 for the state attorney's office. Um, since you'll do more than half of the time in another county, I won't order any cost of incarceration. If that takes care of it, Justin, you just have to finish the time, all right? Would that, uh, I wouldn't have probation when I get out, Your Honor? Nope, but not, uh, not for all me. Right. You'll be done. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I got that one more on Zoom. We're logging in now, Your Honor. Alrighty, me too. Hey, Mike, let's take my toll into custody and keep it. <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry I left. <laughs> no, he's not. He was Tony, how's that? Can you hear me? You guys are still on mute, but shake your head if you can hear me. Just so I can hear you, bro. Okay. Okay. I, I kind of have that sometimes, too. Uh, so, Donnie, you're here on the charge of aggravated assault. There's probable cause for that charge. As to that charge, you're going to hire your own lawyer, or you want me to appoint a lawyer to represent you? Sure can. Do you want me to appoint a lawyer to represent you, Donnie? Right, I'll get you a lawyer. You want a lawyer? No, I don't. You sure? Aggravated assault. It's a felony. Aggravated assault. That's a felony charge. Right. Let me let me appoint you. Let, Donnie, let me give you a lawyer, okay? Yeah, I, 
think so. But I'll give you one. You don't have to pay for them. I'll give them to you for free. Right. Point the public. Okay, hang on a second. Any history statement? I've only heard from 1980. Okay. So, Donnie, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set your bond at $100, okay? One hundred dollars. That's your bond. One hundred dollars. Right. But now listen. When you're out, no, don't have any contact with Terrence. All right. You stay away from. You stay away from Terrence. I got you a lawyer. I already got you one. Okay? So you're going to be back in court on June 16th, okay? Okay. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Bond court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. Good afternoon folks, my name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if probable cause exists for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred. More likely than not you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent to these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the State Attorney's Office is able to prove the allegations against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this afternoon, that is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit or the warrant which led to your arrest determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same, or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be. If you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. You do have the right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you advise that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. I now need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Y'all saw me swear for him. Tell truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, you can step forward to the podium. Brendan Brunn. Afternoon, Brendan. What's your date of birth? It's 8-17-95. Brendan, I have a warrant for you out of the state of Illinois. Uh, your options are this. Uh, you're entitled to an extradition hearing if you wish. The point of that hearing would be to determine if you're the right guy and if the state of Illinois actually has a warrant for your arrest. Uh, while you're waiting for that process to happen, you'd stay right here in my jail without bond. That process can take up to 60 days. Uh, at that point, then, uh, Illinois would be notified and they would come and get you if, if you are the right guy. You could waive your right to that extradition hearing this afternoon if you wish. If you waive the right, Illinois will be contacted immediately and told they have 15 days to come get you. Uh, if you're still here in 15 days, they'd bring you back to see me and I'd find out what's going on. Uh, so I need to know from you, do you want an extradition hearing or would you like us to put Illinois on the clock right now? No, that's my warrant right there. Say it again? I said that's my warrant. All right, well, let's, I'll have you sign the waiver, Brendan. We'll, we'll get you going. Okay. 
Good. Michael Jenkins. Afternoon, Michael. What's your date of birth? 12 75 Michael, you're here on a charge of battery being domestic in nature. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I'm not sure at this time. I'm going to okay. see how things play out. Okay. And state? Yes, uh, 2017, he's adjudicated guilty on criminal mischief. 2006, adjudicated guilty on possession of marijuana. 2013, adjudicated guilty of possession of marijuana and possession of paraphernalia. 2011, adjudicated, adjudicated guilty of false names of Leo and, and Willis. Uh, 2007, uh, adjudicated guilty on a petty theft. Uh, 2003, was pulled on aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and then some older things from earlier. Okay. And Michael, I have an address for you on Lincoln Avenue in Missouri Town. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Um, at least 10 years. All right. Are you working these days? Self-employed. What do you do? Mobile pet grooming. Okay. Uh, I'll set your bond at $500. The condition of the bond is that while the charge is pending, you'll have no contact with Ms. Hilkin. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message, you don't contact her through social media. Don't go where she lives, don't go where she works, don't have any contact of any kind. Any way that you might imagine contacting her, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond until the charges are resolved. It means no contact even if she wants the contact. So if you answer your phone and hear her voice, you should hang up. If you're out and about and see her, you should turn around and run the other way. You need to understand that she cannot drop the charges against you. That's not a decision she's allowed to make. She might go to the state attorney's office and ask them to drop the charges. She might tell them she's not interested in pursuing this. But that decision belongs solely to the assistant state attorney handling your case. So unless that person or the judge on your case tells you the charges are dropped, you should assume they're not dropped and you should not have contact. I have to hold you this afternoon up until 4 p.m. So if you wanted to serve you with a civil injunction, for protection against domestic violence so we'd know where to find you. If you get the civil injunction, it's doubly important you not have contact because in that case, not only would you get your bond revoked here, but you could get new charges for violating the injunction. I'll have you back in court on June 16th, all right? Sounds good. Thank you. Michael Orovitz. To Michael, date of birth? 313-1998. Michael, I have a warrant for you out of uh, Polk County. Uh, looks like it's for uh, failing to appear on a driving on a suspended license charge. The judge that issued that warrant set a bond at $250. I'm not allowed to change that. If you can post that bond, then you can go to Polk County and find out when they want you in court. If you can't post it, uh, they'll have five days to come and pick you up, all right? All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey Phillips. Afternoon, Your Honor. Jeffrey, date of birth? July 17th, 1970. So hang on one second. All right, Jeffrey, I have two charges. I got a burglary with a battery and a felony domestic battery by strangulation. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I, I have a, a Jimmy Brown as my attorney. Okay, very good. State any history? Uh, no prior convictions, Your Honor. All right. And, Jeff, I have an address for you on Heathcliff Street in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Heathcliff Street? Yes, sir. Yes, How sir. long have you lived there? Uh, I've been there since October of last year. All right. Are you working these days? Yes, I work for UPS. I set your bond at $2,500 on each charge. That's a total of $5,000. Condition is that you have no contact with Ms. Pace while this charge is pending. Did you hear me explain no contact a moment ago? I, I understand. I understand. Very good. Also, I have to hold you until 4 p.m. I'll have you back in court on the 16th of June. Make sure you get a hold of Mr. Brown right away, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Bond court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button.
and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Boncourt to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. Good morning folks, my name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here uh, in Hernando County. Some of you are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if there's probable cause for those charges. Probable cause simply means that it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred and more likely than not you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this morning, I presume that you're innocent to these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state is able to prove the allegations against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this morning, that is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit or the warrant which led to your arrest. I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lower or left the same or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be, and if you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this morning. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. And I need each of you who are here for first appearance to please raise your right hands and be sworn. You all saw me swear firm, tell truth, all truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When I call your name, you can step forward to the podium. Danielle Jungust. You need to get by the microphone there, Danielle. There you go. What's your date of birth? 2177. Right. Uh, so, Danielle, the charge is uh, battery on a law enforcement officer. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. Sorry. Appoint the PD, Steve. Uh, 2019, she was adjudicated guilty on a duelist. Second, 2018, was hold on a duelist. 2017, adjudicated guilty on a criminal mischief. 2017, adjudicated guilty on contempt of court. Uh, 2013, adjudicated guilty on possession of controlled substance and a duelist. 2006, adjudicated guilty on possession of paraphernalia. 2006, adjudicated guilty on resisting an officer. Uh, 2006, adjudicated guilty on a duelist. 2006, adjudicated guilty on two counts of worthless check and was hold on four counts of a worthless check. And 2001, no, no valid withhold. Danielle, I've got an address for you on Marina Way in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? I've been there for almost a year. All right. Are you working these days? I have two jobs, sir. What do you do? Um, I work at 7-Eleven over there on 19 Berkeley Manor, and I also work at Homosassa at Fishtails. I'm a bartender. Okay. I'm going to set your bond at $1,000. I'll have you back in court. On the 7th of June, uh, very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, right? Okay, so does that mean my bond was lowered? Yeah, it was 5000 I just set it at 1000 Thank you very much. You bet. Veronica Munford. Good morning, Ms. Munford. What's your date of birth? Good morning. Um, 226 Ms. Munford, you're hearing a warrant that I signed. I found probable cause for a violation of probation. Uh, the folks at probation are recommending 30 days in the county jail. If you wanted to take that this morning, you could. If you'd rather have a chance to speak to an attorney first, uh, you may do that. Uh, if you opt for the attorney, however, I will leave you at no bond, so you won't be getting out of jail today. Uh, the question is, do you want to talk to the lawyer or do you want to just take the 30? Okay, so you're saying, um, I understand you said, 30 days on, um, but you said if I wait for the attorney. Can you get a little closer, Veronica, to the microphone? Oh, I'm not uh, hearing you. Oh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Oh. Okay, you're saying um, you said 30 days, or if I wait for an attorney, then what? I'm sorry. So if you want to admit the violation, I'd sentence you to 30 days right now. You have credit for one. Uh, on a 30-day sentence, assuming you behave yourself in jail, you serve 25, you'd have 24 left to do. 
if you tell me that you'd rather speak to an attorney before you do anything, then I would appoint an attorney. I would leave your bond at no bond so you would not get out of jail. And then I would have you back in court on the 8th of June. Uh, the 8th right. of June is more days away than you would serve if you took the 30 today. Right. I'll, I'll take a 30. There you go. You understand, uh, Veronica, by entering an admission, you give up a right to have a trial by uh, court, the right to confront the witnesses against you, the right to have a lawyer represent you, but you want to give up those rights so we can resolve this today? That's fine. All right. In case number 21MM1325, do you admit that you violated your probation? Oh, yes, sir. Very good. I'll accept that admission, find it was freely and voluntarily made, revoke and terminate that probation, unsuccessfully adjudicate you guilty of the underlying charge if we didn't do that before. I'll sentence you to 30 days in the county jail, credit one day served, $100 for the state attorney's office and your cross incarceration, but that takes care of it, Veronica. You just have to finish the time, all right? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Andy Mata. Morning, Andy. What's your date of birth? March 17, 2001. All right. You're hearing a warrant I signed uh, for failing to appear in my courtroom on a charge of two charges, possession of paraphernalia, possession of marijuana. Uh, stated, can he resolve these this yes, morning? Yes, the offer would be a withhold on both counts and find the cost. Okay. The return for the PTI. Okay. Andy, if you want to resolve them today, you complete no contest. If you did, I would withhold adjudication on both counts. There would be a fine and court cost on count one of 550 Count two would be $88. You'd be on your own to make a payment plan for those through the clerk's office. No probation, no more jail. Is that something you'd like to do? Yes. You understand by entering a plea in these cases, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, the right to remain silent, the right to have a lawyer represent you, but you want to give up those rights so we can take care of this today? Yes. In case number... Uh, 21 MM 1013 as to the charge of count one of possession of drug paraphernalia. How do you wish to plead? You may plead no contest. I'll plead no contest? Yes, sir. Very good. And count two, possession of marijuana. How do you wish to plead? You may also plead no contest. Yes, sir. Very good. I'll accept those pleas. I'll find they were freely and voluntarily made. I'll withhold adjudication on both counts. Finding court costs on count one is uh, 550, count two is 88. That takes care of it, Andy. If there's nothing else keeping you in the jail, you will be released today, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Christopher Morton. Um, morning, Mr. Morton. What's your date of birth? 7-14-89. Mr. Morton, you have a uh, driving under the influence and a driving on a suspended license. Suspended for driving under the influence. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Um, I'm still going to hire uh, my own counsel. Okay. And state, I understand he has an open case for the same thing. I think that's him. I this is that person. It's not. 21CT3025. Somebody look it up for me. Yes, that's him. That's him? Yes. Okay, that's him. Okay. All right. Chris, you have a you have a case coming back on the 31st of May already, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Very good. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, uh, on the DUI, I'll set the bond at 1000 on the driving on a suspended license uh, at the 10000 per the schedule. And then uh, job number one when you're out on bond is don't pick up new charges. Certainly don't pick up the same charge again. Uh, therefore, uh, pursuant, it appears to me that you've done that. So pursuant to Florida Statute 903.0471, I'm going to revoke your pretrial release in 21CT3025. We're going to hold you without bond until the 31st of May. Uh, when I'll have both of these cases back, I'll have this one back that day as well. Um, if you still plan to hire private counsel, make sure that they know that you're in jail uh, on an RCO, all right? Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Apologies. Hold on, I'm sorry. What, 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 what did you say about the last one? The last part? I said you're not getting out of jail until May 31st, so make sure you tell a lawyer, if you're hiring a lawyer, that the, what your situation is. 
All right, thank you. Thank you. Benjamin Dedzinski. Yes, sir. Your Honor, he's going to need to be sworn in. He uh, failed to read. All right, raise your right hand, Benjamin. Raise your right hand, Benjamin. Raise your right hand. Okay, Sami Swear, Frank, tell truth, the whole truth, not but the truth. Yes, sir. All right, state your name. Benjamin Henry Nizinski, sir. All right, Benjamin, you had two charges today, trespass and resisting. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, I'm going to hire a private counsel, sir. Very and good. if not, I'd like uh, uh, two days notice to uh, court and private defender. Okay. State any history? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, 2021, he was adjudicated guilty on possession of meth and possession of drug paraphernalia. 2021, adjudicated guilty on a trespass after warning. 2012, adjudicated guilty on improper That's not me. exhibition. 2012, adjudicated guilty on a dualist. 2011, adjudicated guilty on a violation of domestic violence injunction. 2011, adjudicated guilty on a DV battery. Uh, 2005, adjudicated guilty on possession of meth, possession of drug paraphernalia. And 2003, adjudicated guilty on the DUI. Okay. And Benjamin, where have you been staying lately? Uh, I've actually been on hiatus, sir. Okay. Are you working at all? Uh, here and there. All right. I'll leave your bond for the schedule. I'm security and disabled, sir. Okay. I'm still going to leave your bond for the schedule. 1000 on each count. The total is 2000 I'll have you back in court on June 8th, all right? Thank you. William Price. Afternoon, or morning, William. What's your date of birth? 12-19-70. Uh, William, you're here on a uh, warrant that I signed. I found probable cause uh, for a violation of probation. Uh, as to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, I'd like a public defender, please. I'll point the PD. Uh, the bond on that is uh, no bond. I'm not going to change it. I will move it to the 3rd of June, which is where your other case is. Public defender will come see you before then, see if we can get these worked out, all right? All right, sounds Thank good. Thank you. And Jonathan Sauer Mago. Morning, Jonathan, what's your date of birth? 8493. Jonathan, the charge is violation of an injunction. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Oh, I'll point the PD. State. Yes, uh, 2020, he had adjudication was held on a violation of a DV injunction involving the same victim. Uh, 2017, adjudication was held on possession of marijuana and adjudication, adjudicated guilty on a reckless reduced from a DUI. Uh, 2014, he was adjudicated guilty on a felony battery and a tampering with the witness, which was a different victim. Okay. Alright, and Jonathan, I have an address for you on Commercial Way. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, the address I have for you is the address you can't go to. Are you working at all? Here and there. Okay. I'll set your bond to $2,000. You understand uh, now, Jonathan, that you can't have any contact of any kind with Francis Russell? Yes, sir. Okay. Can't be within 500 feet of Francis. You get that? Yes, sir. Okay. I have you back in court on the 8th of June. If you get out, make sure you contact the public defender right away, okay? Okay. All right, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Y'all have a good week. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. Purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if there's probable cause for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred and more likely than not that you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me uh, this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent to these allegations. That presumption of innocence stays with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state attorney's office is able to prove the allegations against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this afternoon, that is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit or the warrant which led to your arrest. We'll determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same or that there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. 
We'll let you know when your next court date will be. If you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. To say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. And I need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Y'all saw me swear for him, tell truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name call, please step forward to the podium. Brittany Logan. Afternoon, Brittany, what's your date of birth? 227.94. Brittany, I have four charges today. Possession of methamphetamine, possession of controlled substance, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you wish to represent yourself, you're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD, Steve. Judge, um, I'm going to go off of CSIS. Uh, 2020, the possession of controlled substance, concealed weapon, possession of paraphernalia, and Duellis adjudication of guilt. 2019, possession of controlled substance, paraphernalia, adjudication of guilt. Willis 2017 adjudication, no valid adjudication, um, petty theft in 2014-2013, uh, uh, drug history, uh, cannabis in 2010, 2010, cocaine 2010, other charges, but I was just giving you the main things. Okay. Uh, Brittany, I have an address for you on Fair Oak Street in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yeah. How long have you been there? Ten years. All right. You're working these days? No. How long has it been since you worked? Two years. Right. We'll leave your bonds for the schedule, which is uh, 2000 on the felonies, 1000 on the misdemeanors, for a total of $6,000. i will have you back in court on the 7th of June. If you're able to get out, go see the public defender right away, okay? Okay. Thank you. Lauren Moon. <laughs> Afternoon, Ms. Moon. What's your date of birth? 2794. Ms. Moon, you're here on a warrant that I signed. I found probable cause uh, for three charges for a, a homicide, introduction of contraband, and possession of controlled substance. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? The public defender. I'll point the PD. State, is this one where she's not entitled to bond? I would ask that, that, that you not uh, set a bond. I know in Lake County, she's currently, I believe, under supervision. Uh, as well as she, um, I think for felony petty theft and resisting without violence, and then based on the nature of the charges, I would ask to maintain they can always file a motion, but at right, this point, right. I would ask you to maintain it. <laughs> um, I'll find the, the proof is evident, presumption, great. As to the uh, homicide then, Lauren, I'm going to continue to hold you without bond. I'll, I'll leave the other two at the 5,000. We'll have you back in court on May 24th. Uh, I'm certain a public defender will come see you before you go to court, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you. Fred Frazier. Hey, Fred, raise your right hand. You were snoozing when I swore everybody else in. Saw me swear yes, for him, tell truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, what's your date of birth? 829.79. Charges uh, disorderly conduct. State, is this something he can resolve this morning? Uh, this uh, it, judge, it, it, would be a, it would be a jail offer, and it would be right. taken into consideration that he has uh, continued to have charges yeah, I'm just familiar about a with year. Yes. Uh, so I would, if he wanted to resolve it, I'm not going to say this is what it will be later, but today it would be 30 days. Fred, if you want to take care of it today, it's 30 days. You got credit for one. You want to do that or you want to try to bond out? Oh, uh, first, first of all, can I see the issue, sir? Nope, I don't want to talk about the facts, Fred. I want to know if you want to bond out or if you want to take the 30. I take the 30. All right. You understand by entering a plea today, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, right to remain silent, right to have a lawyer, but you want to give up those rights so we can resolve this right now? Yes, sir. As to the charge of disorderly conduct, how do you wish to plead? You can plead no contest. 
No contest. I'll accept that plea, find it was freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty 30 days in the county jail, credit one served. Finding court cost is 550, cost of incarceration, but that takes care of it, Fred. You just need to finish the time, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Hamilton. Afternoon, Michael. What's your date of birth? 11-367. Michael, I've got the warrant signed by Judge Merritt. He found uh, probable cause for two charges, attempted trespass and assault on a Leo. Uh, as to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You want to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I like a public defender. I'll point to PD, State. Judge, uh, I would let the court be aware that in Just for you on uh, Greenbrier Villa Court, maybe? Is it in Brooksville? Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Um, approximately uh, seven months, eight months. All right. You working these days? I, I'm on disability. I'm legally blind. Okay. I'll leave your bonds for the schedule, uh, which is a total of $1,500. We'll have you back in court on the 8th of June. If you're able to get out, contact the public defender right away, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Eric Klovanowski. <clears throat> Afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? July 27th, 1996. Eric, uh, first thing I have is a warrant that was signed by Judge Merritt. He found uh, probable cause for five counts, trafficking in cocaine, possession of cocaine with intent, possession of a structure for the purpose of the sale of cocaine, unlawful use of two-way communication device, and possession of drug paraphernalia. And then I have new charges of possession of marijuana with intent and possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause for all those charges. Then as to those charges, you wish to represent yourself, you're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Private counsel. All right. State? Yes, sir. Judge, uh, he currently has open charges in Pasco County. Uh, DUI, uh, serious bodily injury, uh, displaying a firearm, and possession of cocaine with intent to sell. He has uh, uh, 2020 reckless driving, cannabis 2020, and then uh, 20 uh, charges of all drugs that have been dismissed. Okay. And Eric, I have an address for you on Beckwith Avenue in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Currently, yes. I'm going to be moving to 8445 Blaine Road in about 20 days if I'm out. Okay. And how long have you lived in Hernando County? All my life. All right. Are you working these days? No, I'm disabled. All right. As for the charges in... Uh, uh, Judge Merritt's warrant, I'm going to leave the bonds per that warrant. That's a total of 71000 As to the two new charges on the marijuana with intent, I'll set the bond at 5000 On the paraphernalia, 1000 That's 6000 For a total all the way around at 77000 They're all coming back on June 7th. Uh, make sure when you talk to your lawyer, tell them about that date, okay? All right. Thank, thank you. you. Daniel Randall. <laughs> Afternoon, sir. Date of birth? 10-15-69. Daniel, I've got uh, nine counts of uh, sex offender registration violation. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like a public defender? I'll need a public defender, yeah. Very good. State? Judge, I did not put anything on CSIS, but I looked at the NCIC, FCIC, and on that, uh, which are so easy to read. <laughs> Sorry. Try to hurry, Judge, but I did 
did find some out of state history. I'm trying to. I do see probation violations, sexual assault. I guess is, is there much history after the uh, qualifying? Right, I can't see the, I can't see much uh, from Florida or out of state okay. since that time. Okay. But he does have, I guess, he was on first appearances yesterday yeah. for other charges, yeah. so with Grand Theft Auto and drugs. Okay. And Daniel, we have that Cortez uh, Boulevard address, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And did you tell me you were working? Uh, well, that was the problem, Your Honor. Oh, that's right. I remember. All right. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll leave that right there. I got hired immediately. I got hired um, immediately, and I didn't follow through with this stuff. I apologize. Okay. Hang um, on. Ty, Kyle Wilson said he's going to help me through it through this way, you guys. I just okay. live trying to live a productive life down here. Okay. I, I ain't trying no harm. I'm taking All care right. of everything. All right. Hang on. Uh, so you got nine counts here. I'm going to set the bond at 2,000 on each count. That's going to be a total of 18,000. Condition of the bond on these uh, is that because of your status, you'd be subject to GPS monitoring at your expense if you're able to bond out. I'm going to have these back on the 7th of June. What's that? Where does other cases go? Uh, let's put them on the same date. What day is that? The 7th? This one's the 7th. It might have been something else. June 7th. Everything will be on June 7th, Daniel. If you can't get out, uh, the public defender will come see you at the jail, all right? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kenneth Schaefer. Thank you. Afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? 5872. Kenneth, you're here on three charges of aggravated assault. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll point the PD, Steve. Judge, I'm showing a, uh, it works backwards forward, but uh, burglary conviction 92, sexual assault dismissed 93, <laughs> burglary conviction 2013, uh, drug charges 2013, false information 2014. Contraband providing to inmate 2018. Uh, it's out of state history, so it's hard to. Okay. All right. And can I have, I don't have an address for you. Where have you been living? Uh, 2025 Abilene Road. How long have you been there? Two months. Okay. And do you live with Tracy? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have a job these days? Yes, I do. What do you do? A irrigation. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to set your bond um, at uh, 5000 on each count. That's a total of 15000 Condition of the bond is that you'll have no contact with Tracy Zamet, Tina Moore, or Brian Bell. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message, you don't contact them through social media. Uh, you don't go where any of them live. You don't go where they work. Uh, you don't have a third person contact them. Any way that you might imagine having contact, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond until the charges are resolved. No, I ain't making bond anyway. Okay. I, I still got to I still got to go through it. All right. Mm -hmm. um, you need to understand that none of them can drop the charges against you. They may go to the state attorney's office and ask for the charges to be dropped, uh, but that decision belongs solely to the assistant state attorney handling your case. I also have to hold you until 4 p.m. so that if any of them wanted to serve you with an injunction, we know where to find you. Uh, that will have you back then on the 7th of June. If you can't make bond, the public defender is going to come see you before court, all right? Yeah. Thank you. And Terry Smith. Afternoon, Terry. What's your date of birth? 6486. I have four warrants today. They, I think, were all signed by Judge Merritt. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, in each case, Judge Merritt found probable cause. 
uh, for five charges. In each case, it's the same five charges. Trafficking in cocaine, possession of controlled substance with intent, keeping of a place or uh, a vehicle or a structure for the purpose of uh, the sale, possession of paraphernalia, and unlawful use of two-way communication device. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, <clears throat> if I can bond out, I'd like to get my own, but I'm going to have to do a public defender. If I All can't right. Bond out. I'll appoint the public defender. Uh, state history. Judge, he has a uh, 20, 2009 grand theft, withhold, uh, marijuana possession with intent to sell or deliver, 2009 withhold, DUI, 2008, domestic battery, 2005, and that can be backwards. No, that's okay. Terry, I've got an address for you on Drayton Street in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Uh, a year. And you working these days? Yes, sir, I was. If I can get out, I'll still be working. What were you doing? I work for Bell's Outlet. I subcontract to them doing fixtures with uh, okay. Deuces Wild. Okay. All right, well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the bonds for the warrants. That's 71000 on each of the four warrants for a total of 284000 They're all coming back. On the 7th of June, uh, if you can't get out, the public defender will come see you before you go to court, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you. That's all I got, Jill. Bond court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of bond court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want bond court to continue to be available on YouTube for free, then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if there's probable cause for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred, more likely than not you are the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent to these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state attorney's office is able to prove the charges against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release today, that is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've got a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit of the warrant which led to your arrest. I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lower or left the same, or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. I'll let you know when your next court date will be. If you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. Do you have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel? Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. Now, I need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Y'all saw me swear firm, tell truth, hold truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, please step forward to the podium. Taylor Granville. <clears throat> Morning, Taylor. What's your date of birth? Good afternoon. Um, my date of birth is 5582. You're here on a warrant that was signed by Judge Barbie. He found probable cause for one count of uh, battery as a second offense being domestic in nature. Uh, Mr. Putin. Yeah, what I can tell you about Ms. Granville is that it should not be a felony. The prior um, that's referred to in this case is actually before Your Honor uh, in the process of being expunged. That was dropped. Okay. Um, so it should not be a, in any which way, shape, or form a felony because she has no other prior record. Okay. Um, what I can also tell you is that the victim in this particular case is her soon-to-be ex-husband. My office was retained on Friday to represent Ms. Granville during the divorce. The husband just retained counsel, it's our understanding, yesterday. Um, regarding this incident, if you notice, she said that her birthday was May 5th. Um, regarding this instance, what I can tell the court is that um, it is an argument between her and her husband over her husband not giving her her keys so that she could go to the airport to pick up her friend who was flying in for her birthday weekend. Um, her husband took the purse. 
uh, from her, which contained her keys, and she then left the residence. Her husband proceeded to call the police, and it's our, our belief that he uh, made up this story that there was a struggle over the keys. Um, there was no physical contact in this particular matter. Um, what I can also tell you regarding um, the husband is that the husband was texting my client over the weekend, um, was asking to spend time with her over the weekend. They did spend Mother's Day or a part of Mother's Day together um, over the weekend, all while this warrant was outstanding. Then all of a sudden yesterday, when she was supposed to go pick up her kids, and knowing that they had FaceTime together and made arrangements that Ms. Granville was going to pick up the kids, the husband contacted um, Ms. Granville advising that he could not pick up the kids, which obviously Ms. Granville found confusing because she was supposed to pick up the kids anyway. Um, and then lo and behold, later on that night, she was arrested um, on the outstanding warrant. I was contacted, aware of the situation um, over the weekend. I tried call calling the sheriff's office um, to find out what was going on. Was not able to get a hold of anybody. Um, I also called warrants to find out if there was a warrant, but it was the weekend. No one answered the phone. Um, and what I can tell you is the husband is the previous victim, who I'm very keenly aware of, uh, is a, uh, and has an issue with alcoholism. Um, they have two small children. Um, I know that there's going to be a no contact clause. It's our belief that this that the husband in this case is just being vindictive given the status of their um, marital situation. Uh, I don't know if the court would allow there to be contact for purposes of the small children. I do know that I was contacted at, Ms. Granville tried calling me about 10.30 last night. I was watching the hockey game, didn't get to my phone. Um, and then I tried calling her back, no answer. I assumed she was arrested. I got a text from her sister at 1.30 in the morning advising that she had been arrested. Her sister contacted me at 6.30 this morning advising, and, and here I am today um, before you. I have been retained on the case. Uh, I was going to ask the court if you would consider ROR on her. I do know it's domestic. If, if you're going to set a bond, I would just ask it to be nominal. Um, so I will set a nominal bond. There's not much I can do about it being in circuit court now other than based on what you're telling me, you'll be back here. I've already spoke to the yeah. state and they agreed. That she has no So, so that, that will certainly happen. And I'm going to set a nominal bond. I will ex I'm going to, I'm going to order Mike the no contact today, uh, with the, but I'll add the condition that, that going forward, it can the, the circuit court can amend my no contact in the context of the divorce proceedings. Okay. Uh, so, because I'm sure you guys will be there shortly uh, for a temporary order, and you can, right. and I'll let that control what happens here. As normally it's the other way around. Right. I've made a note to let family court figure out what contact should be. Okay. All right, because I assume you'll be there pretty quickly. Yes. All right. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Granville, I'm going to set your bond at $10. Condition of the bond is, is that until the further order of the family court uh, in your divorce proceeding, you'll have no contact with Sean. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message. Don't contact him through social media. Don't have a third person contact him. Don't go where he lives. Don't go where he works. Uh, if you have any contact and we find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond. Um, this is a warrant, so I don't have to hold her today. Um, right now, the court date is the 7th of June. That's likely to change, but for purposes of today's hearing, it's the 7th of June. And then, the, like I said, the contact provisions are free to be amended by the circuit court when you guys get there on the divorce. All right. Anything else, Mike? That's all I have. Very good. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. What was the Thank you. Ten bucks. Uh, Christina Alloway. Your Honor. Yes. We just learned that Francisco, Jorge Francisco, needs a translator. <laughs> okay, we'll set it up. <laughs> Alloway. Oh, he's the last one anyway. Right. Alloway. She's moving, Your Honor. Afternoon, Christina. What's your date of birth? 2078. Christina, you're here on a warrant signed by Judge Hewitt. Apparently, she thinks she failed to appear in her court on a petty theft state. Is this something she can resolve today? Adjudication pending. Right. County. Okay. 
Christine, if you wanted to resolve your case today, uh, well, you were in Hillsborough. How long were you in jail in Hillsborough County, Christina? Uh, it was a warrant out for my arrest. How, how, how many days were you in jail in Hillsborough County? Three days. Okay. So if, if you wanted to resolve this case today, Christina, you complete no contest. If you did that, uh, I would sentence you to 10 days. You already have credit for five, so you'd have to do five more days, but then this would be over. Is that something you're interested in doing? No contest. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, uh, you understand by entering your plea today, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, the right to remain silent, right to have a lawyer, but you want to give up those rights so that you can enter your no contest plea? Yes? No. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. I don't know what to say. Okay. Well, what I'm offering you is a chance to do five more days in jail, and then this is done. Then you'll get out of this case is over. Okay. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Okay. So that means if you want to do that, then you have to waive those rights I just talked about. The right to have a jury trial, the right to confront witnesses, the right to have a no, lawyer. No, I, I just, let me get no contest. I don't even know what to say. All you have to do is answer my questions. Do you want to waive your rights so that I can take your no contest plea? No contest. Ah! No. Before you, Christina, before you say no contest, I need you to say yes, I want to waive my rights. Yes, I want to. Waive my rights. I want to waive my rights. There you go. Case number 20, okay. MM 343, as to the charge of petty theft, how do you wish to plead? Now you may say no contest. Uh, I don't know. No contest. There it is. I'll accept that plea. Find it was freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to 10 days. Credit 10. Credit 5 days. Finding court costs is 550. I won't order the cost of incarceration as she started out in Hillsboro. I am on assistant. I... And SSD. That's uh, that's fine, Christina. You're going to do five more days, and they're going to let you out. And quite frankly, if you never pay a, a dime of that uh, finding court cost, that's fine with me. Okay. I got to take me off that if I'm in there for. Okay. We're, we're all done, Christina. Have a seat. <laughs> Crystal Barnett. <coughs> Hi, Crystal, what's your date of birth? 5-22-62. Crystal, I got a warrant for you out of Sumter County. The judge has signed the warrant for probable cause for a violation of probation and set your bond at no bond. I'm not allowed to change that. Uh, so we'll let Sumter know you're here and ready to go. I'll give them five days to come pick you up, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Kayla Doobie. <coughs> Hi, Kayla, what's your date of birth? 32883. All right. Kayla, you got a Department of Corrections hold? Yes. Okay. What do you got to do? How much time do you have it to do? Two years. Okay. Uh, so I have, I have uh, one, two, uh, three, four warrants here for you. Uh, the first one was signed by Judge Hewis. She found probable cause for trafficking in meth, possession of meth, and possession of paraphernalia. And then I have three warrants that were signed by uh, Judge Gaglioni, and in each one of those, he found probable cause for trafficking in meth, possession of meth, possession of a conveyance for the purpose, unlawful use of two-way, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Um, I'm going to leave the bonds per the as to those charges. They determine uh, probable cause. Do you want to represent yourself? Do you want private counsel? Would you like the public defender? Public defender, please. I'll appoint the public defender on all those cases. I'm going to leave the bonds per the warrant, which is um, a total of 41000 on each of Judge Scaglione's uh, warrants and a total of 31000 on Judge Hewis's warrant. All of those cases uh, are coming back to Judge Merritt on the 7th of June. PD will come see you before then, see if we can get these worked out real quickly, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you.
Jamie Kujawa. Morning, ma'am. What's your date of birth? 51484. Uh, you are here on 173 counts of aggravated animal cruelty. Uh, there's probable cause for that. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself? You can hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender? I'll point the PD, Steve. Your Honor, this is her only history. And Jamie, I have an address for you on Hollyhock Lane in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you been there? How long have you lived on Hollyhock? Since 2007. Okay. Are you working these days? Um, yes. What do you do? I work at 7 Eleven. Uh, I will set the bond on count one and count two at $1,000 on counts three through 173. I will release you on your own recognizance. So your total bond is 2000 I'll have you back in court on June 7th. Very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, all right? Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, what day Thank was you. June 7th. Thank you. Deborah Sluter. Afternoon, Deborah. What's your date of birth? 86092. Deborah, you're here on a writ to bodily attachment. That means that a uh, child support hearing officer and a circuit judge determined that you owe some child support. They said a cash yes, purge. Looks like $618. Uh, can you afford to pay that, Deborah? No, sir. I applied for disability. Okay, hang on. Hang, hang on a second. So, are, are you working right now? No, no, sir. How long has it been since you worked? Um, about seven months. And you're currently applying for disability? I did last month. Okay. I have custody of my children as well. Okay. So, uh, Deborah, I'm going to find that you're not in contempt in this case and release you on your own recognizance, uh, but you still have to clear this issue up with the folks at child support. So when you get out, make sure you get there and make sure this gets cleared up. If you do nothing, this process will start over again and they'll arrest you again, all right? Yes, sir. I'll right. do it. Thank right you. Away. You bet. Thanks. <laughs> Taylor Beal. Morning, Your Honor. Morning, sir. What's your date of birth? February 8th, 1997. All right. You're here in a warrant signed by Judge Helis. She thinks she failed to appear in her court on two charges, driving on a suspended license and no motor vehicle registration. State, can he fix this today? Uh, Your Honor, it's my understanding that he also may have pled on some felony charges. The state's offers 30 days run concurrent. All right. Mr. Beal, did you just take a plea in a felony case? Yes, sir. All right. And what did you get on that? 1129. Okay. You want to take 30 days on this concurrent? Yes, Your Honor. Very good. You understand by entering plea today, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, the right to remain silent, the uh, right to have a lawyer represent you, but you want to give up those rights so we can take care of this today? Yes, Your Honor. Do you know what? Did he have time? Uh, it's not marked on the display. I have the case number from sub Mr. Beal, how much time served did you have when you took your 1129? 50 days, time credit. Okay. Uh, so in case number uh, 22 CT 454 as the charge that you drove knowing your license was suspended or revoked, how do you wish to plead? You can plead no contest. No contest. And the charge of no motor vehicle registration, how do you wish to plead? No contest. I'll accept those pleas. Finally, they were freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty on both 30 days in the county jail on each, 30 days served on each. Finding court costs on count one is 450, count two is 88. They won't order any incarceration costs as they would have done that in circuit court. And that takes care of your misdemeanors, Mr. Beal. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Matthew Carr. After you, Matthew. Matthew. What's your birthday? 2585. There it is. 
Matthew, you're hearing a warrant signed by Judge Merritt. He found probable cause for a violation of probation. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender, please. I'll appoint the PD. Judge Merritt set your bond at no bond. I'm not allowed to change that. I'll send you back to see him June 7th. The public defender will come see you before then, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Kenneth DeRosa. Afternoon, Kenneth. What's your date of birth? 11-23-80. Kenneth, I have uh, two warrants, both signed by Judge Toner. In both cases, he found probable cause for a violation of community control. As to those charges, you wish to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Um, I have a private attorney. Very good. Uh, the bond on those warrants is no bond. I can't change those. I have to move you to Judge Toner's docket, which is the 16th of June. Uh, make sure when you talk to your lawyer, you tell them about that date, okay? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Arnaldo Garcia. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? 82878. Mr. Garcia, the uh, charge is battery being in domestic in nature. There's probable cause for that charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public uh, defender, please. I'll point the PD, Steve. Yes, Your Honor. There's, in 2014, there was a DUI. I don't have a disposition to it. And there is some out of state, looks like Texas history. Again, and this is all from the 90s. And Mr. Garcia, I had an address for you on Finley Avenue in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. I've been there for 12, 13 years. All right. Is that where Mrs. Garcia lives? Yes, sir. Right. Are you working these days? Uh, here and there, yes. Okay. Set your bond at $100. Condition of the bond is that you'll have no contact with Mrs. Garcia. Did you hear me explain no contact earlier? Uh, can you repeat it again? I sure Please. can. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message, you don't contact her through social media. Don't go where she lives, don't go where she works, don't have a third person contact her, don't have any contact of any kind. Any way that you might possibly imagine having contact, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and I find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond until the charges are resolved. It means no contact even if she wants to contact. So if you answer your phone and hear her voice, you should hang up. If you're out and about and see her, you should turn around and run the other way. You need to understand that she's not allowed to drop this charge. That's not a decision she gets to make. It's quite possible she'll go to the state attorney's office and ask them to drop the charge. But that decision belongs solely to the assistant state attorney handling your case. So unless that person or the judge on your case or your lawyer tells you the charges are dropped, you should assume they're not dropped you should not have contact. In addition, I do have to hold you this afternoon until 4 o'clock so that if she wanted to serve you with a civil injunction for protection against domestic violence, we'd know where to find you. If you get that uh, civil injunction, it's doubly important that you not have contact because in that case, not only could you get your bond revoked here, but you could get new charges for violating the injunction. As far as the home on Findlay is concerned, as long as Mrs. Garcia continues to stay there, you'll have to find somewhere else to stay while this case is progressing. You may go by the house one time to collect your clothes, your toothbrush, whatever you need, wherever you plan to stay. To do that, however, you must contact the sheriff's office first. They would meet you there uh, with a deputy who would stand by uh, while you collect your things and get going where you're going. I'll have you back in court on the 8th of June. Uh, very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, okay? Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Tyler Grzyp. Good afternoon. After, Tyler, what's the date of birth? June 7, 1992. Tyler, you're here on a warrant signed by Judge Toner. He thinks you failed to appear in his court on a charge of burglary. Uh, did you have a lawyer on that case, Tyler? Um, I believe I had a public defender. Okay, I'll continue with the public defender. Judge Toner set your bond at $5,000. i am not allowed to change that. Uh, I'll have you back in court in front of him on the 16th of June. They might have told you the 7th, it'll be the 16th. If you get
get out, you should contact the PD right away. If you can't get out, they're going to come see you at the jail, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anthony Maki. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Anthony. Uh, date of birth? 04-27-1987. Charges retail theft. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, Anthony, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender, please. I'll appoint the PD, State. Uh, Your Honor, based on the history, this would be at least the second. So the state's offer would be 30 days. Anthony, any interest, any interest in doing 30 days to resolve this? Um, you, don't, you don't have to. That, the state's just making that offer right now if you wanted it. Okay, I'll take it. You'll take it? Yes, sir. Okay, you understand by entering a plea today, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, the right to remain silent, the right to have a lawyer, but you want to give up those rights so we can take care of this today? Yes. Uh, as to the charge of uh, retail theft, how do you wish to plead? You can plead no contest. No contest. I'll accept that plea. Find it was freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to 30 days. Credit for two days served. Finding court costs is 550. I'll order restitution reserved for 30 days. Uh, and your cost of incarceration. But that takes care of it, Anthony. Uh, you just need to finish the time, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And I'll unappoint the PD. <laughs> Kendrick Mobley. How you doing, y'all? Pretty much good, Kendrick. Date of birth? 11 All right, Kendrick, you're hearing a warrant signed by Judge Toner. Uh, he thinks you failed to appear in his court on two counts of burglary, a criminal mischief, and a petty theft. Uh, Kendrick, did you have a lawyer on those cases? A public defender. All right, you want to stay with the PD? Yes, sir. All right, I'll continue the appointment of the PD. Judge Toner, uh, set your bond, unfortunately, at 20000 on each count, and I can't change that. It's a total of 80000 I'll have you back in front of him on June 16th. If you're not able to get out, Kendrick, the public defender will come see you before you go to court, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. Daniel Randall? Yes, Governor. Afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? 10 15 69. Mr. Randall, I have about four counts today. I got grand theft auto, driving on a suspended license, possession of controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you wish to represent yourself, you're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I'll, I'll take the public defender. I'll appoint the public defender, Steve. Your Honor, it appears as so, uh, recently, Mr. Um, Randall may have some open cases. I'm sure I'm looking at the right one. In Orlando, but maybe this isn't him because I don't think that's his name. A PCF didn't suggest he had status. I guess I wonder if you can confirm that. Well, What I'm looking at is a completely different name, completely different date of birth, and it says open Orlando with three counts about Leo's. And I, no offense to Mr. Randall, I don't believe that he is uh, 21 years old. <laughs> no, no, so I think that the criminal history. Oh, see, so you have the wrong history. I think I got the wrong history. Um, okay. Okay, and, and Mr. Randall, can you tell me, are you subject to the twice a year reporting requirements? Yes, Your Honor, I, I, okay. I, I did report. And okay, I, okay, that, I just want to confirm that fact, okay? And so you don't have any other history? I, I don't have anything, Judge. I have the wrong person. And, and Daniel, I have an address for you on Cortez Boulevard in uh, Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, Your Honor. How long have you been there? Uh, a month. Right. Are you About working month, these yes. days? Yes, I work for General Cabinets, Your Honor. Uh, so, uh, Daniel, what I'll do is set your bond at 1000 on each count. That's a total of 4000 
Uh, however, because of your status, if you are to bond out, you'll be subject to GPS monitoring at your expense. I'll have you back in court on June 7th. If you do get out, very important that you contact the public defender right away, okay? Yeah, Your Honor, I, yeah. I've, got, I've got no way to contact nobody right now. I've got one day to go back for my job back. I ask you guys finally, I didn't steal this truck. Okay. I'm down here trying to change my life. I work, I work for Sean Radcliffe every Friday at uh, Nature's, Nature's Outreach. Okay, Daniel, to, uh, Daniel there's, there's nothing else I can do about it today. There's, it's a probable cause arrest. Probable cause is a low standard. Uh, so, so that's all there is for it. Um, I've, I've gone below the schedule on the bonds, so I, I understand your situation, but there's nothing else I can do at the moment. If you don't get out, a public defender is coming to see you right away, and that's the person you should talk to about the situation, okay? Okay. And Thank how you. much is my bond? 4000 4, total. Right. Christian Fortunato. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Your Honor. Hello again, Christian. Date of birth? 8999. All right, Christian, this is a probable cause arrest for a violation of probation. Uh, looks like a case where you put on probation out of Pinellas County. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so the bond on this one will be no bond. Um, what that means, quite likely, is you'll stay here until you get your local cases resolved, and then they'll send you to Pinellas to take care of this, all right? Okay, there's no way we can resolve this today? I, I, I can't, Christian. It's, it's out of county and it's circuit court, so there's nothing I can do with it. Yes, sir. It's up the DUI from two and a half years ago, you know? Uh, that's what it says. And it, it looks like they you were in felony court but pled to a misdemeanor, but you still got to go to Pinellas to take care of it. Okay. All right. And then, it, go ahead. Sir, if I, if I pay my bond... On yeah, if you bond out on the other things, then they'll have Pinellas come get you right away. Okay, yes, sir, and then they would figure, I could figure something out with them, of course. Right, exactly. Thank you, sir. You bet. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. All right, and then Francisco is our interpreter. Sandra, how you doing today? Your Honor, we're trying to log into Zoom now. Okay. I'll wait, patient. As per usual. Someone else forgot the jacket this week.
Center. This is Mr. Francisco, Jorge Francisco. Jorge Francisco. Sir, you've been charged with uh, a battery on a detainee and the introduction of contraband into a detention facility. Señor, usted tiene cargos de eh, agresión física en un reo y también de introducir contrabando en eh, la cárcel. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you wish to represent yourself. If you're going to hire private counsel, would you like the public defender? Señor, respecto a esos cargos, usted quiere representarse solo, quiere contratar a su propio abogado o quiere que se le asigne un abogado de defensor público. Desde defensor público, ya viene diciendo desde que llegué aquí, mi mamá no he visto ningún trabajo aquí. Because his court date hasn't come up yet, they'll be there to see him uh, before the end of the week. Uh, I will uh, set his bond to 2000 on each count. I'll move the case to Friday, the 13th of May, which is where his other case is already set. He can expect to see the public defender before then. Very good, thanks, sir. Uh, good afternoon, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if probable cause exists for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred. More likely than not, you are the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent to these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until uh, the state attorney's office is able to prove the allegations against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this uh, afternoon, that is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've got a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit or the warrant which led to your arrest. I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be. If you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. I now need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Y'all saw me swear firm, tell truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, you can step forward to the podium. Uh, Michelle Paterano. Morning, Michelle. What's your date of birth? 8989. All right, you're here on two probable cause arrests for violation of probation. There is probable cause for the VOP. As to those VOPs, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender, please. I'll point the PD. Bond, of course, is going to be no bond. I'm going to change your date to the 2nd of June. Uh, the public defender will come see you before you go to court, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Destiny Stevens. On a destiny, what's your date of birth? 11 Okay, so destiny, the first thing I have is an aggravated battery being domestic in nature. There's probable cause for that charge. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender, please. I'll point the PD. State any history? Yeah. Um... I didn't go through it real a lot because of the, because I thought it was a child support, but there's, there's failure to appear. She, she has a child support too, but she has this ag bad. I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
sorry, they were stapled together. So yes, Your Honor. Uh, the history goes back. Uh, it's just some old stuff from like 10 years ago with the FCA, but then from 2017, there's an arrest for battery. Uh, there's grand theft that was conviction, 2017, another grand theft conviction, battery conviction from 6, 1617, uh, in Pasco County, some larcenies, uh, traffic, driving suspended, probation violations, grand theft. Just at 1129, like two years ago on that. Okay. Yeah, it's got quite some. Miss Stevens, I got an address for you on Kurt Street in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you lived there? Uh, about two months now. All right. Is that where Mr. Hazelton lives? No, he lives on Center Street in Brooksville. Okay. Are you working these days? Yes, sir. I just started a job. What do you do? Pet groomer. Okay. Uh, where do you do that? Um, it's like a mobile grooming. Okay. Uh, on the battery, I'll set your bond at $2,000. That one's coming back on June 7th. The condition of the bond is that while the charge is pending, you'll have no contact with Mr. Hazelton. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message. You don't contact him through social media, don't go where he lives, don't go where he works, you don't have any contact of any kind. Any way that you might imagine contacting him, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond will be revoked and you'll be held without bond until the charges are resolved. It means no contact even if he wants the contact, so if you answer your phone and hear his voice, you should hang up. If you're out and about and see him, you should turn around and run the other way. You need to understand that he cannot drop the charges against you. That's not a decision he gets to make. He may go to the state attorney's office and ask them to drop the charges. He may tell them he's not interested in pursuing this. But that decision belongs solely to the assistant state attorney handling your case. So unless that person or the judge on your case or your lawyer tells you the charges are dropped, you should assume they are not dropped and you should not have contact. Yes, in addition, I have to hold you today up until 4 o'clock so that if Mr. Hazelton wanted to serve you with a civil injunction for protection against domestic violence, we'd know where to find you. If you get the civil injunction, it's doubly important you not have contact because in that case, not only would you get your bond revoked here, but you'd get new charges for violating uh, that injunction. Um, you also have a child support writ here today, a writ of bodily attachment, which means that a child support hearing officer and a circuit judge determine that you owe child support uh, based on what you were telling me earlier, I'll find um, that you are in contempt for not paying child support. The sanction for that contempt will be 10 days in the county jail or until you come up with $50 cash. So $50 will get you out on the child support issue. Uh, Destiny, as far as that goes, if you pay the 50 bucks, that'll, that'll get you out of jail, but it won't clear up the issue and you'll want to get yourself to child support enforcement. Uh, soon to, to try and get it uh, fixed, because if you don't, uh, then this process will start over again somewhere down the line, and you'll get arrested again, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Robert Davis. Yes, sir. Afternoon, Robert. Date of birth? Uh, 211.85. So Robert, I have a warrant for you out of Pasco County. Judge down there thinks you failed to appear in court. Uh, looks like a petty theft. Uh, the judge set your bond at $10,013. I don't have any authority to change that. If you're able to post that bond, then you go down to Newport Ritchie and find out when you're going back to court. If you can't post it, then we'll let Pasco know, and I'll give them five days to come pick you up, okay? Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. Christian Fortunato. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Afternoon, Christian. Date of birth? 8 9 Christian, you're here on a warrant signed by Judge Barbie. You found probable cause for one count of grand theft auto. 
as to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to ha hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Um, I'm going to get a public defender because I haven't been able to get on the phone at all. Okay. I'm still waiting. I'll point the PD. State, what do you know? Uh, it's significant over the last five, six, seven years. Uh, drugs, false name to law enforcement, resisting without trespass, marijuana paraphernalia, weapons, fake marijuana, stale marijuana, DUIs, uh, something, there's a warrant out of another state, I think from Wisconsin for a Grand Theft Auto, okay. and something in Citrus, I don't know exactly what happened, some serious bird bet kidnapping, I'm not sure if that was dropped or pending. Yeah, that's all dropped, man. That's what I thought. On DUI. Okay, okay. Sure. Kristen, uh, I've got an address for you on Altoona Avenue in Spring Hill, is that where you live? Yes, Your Honor. How long have you been there? Since I was like five years old, sir. Right. You got a job these days? Oh, uh, yeah, I work with my buddy. He has LLCs. Okay. What do you do? Construction. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave the bond for the warrant, which is the 2000. I'll have you back in court on the 7th of June. When you get out, make sure you contact the PD right away, okay? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Larry Jabain. Afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? July 9, 1946. Larry, you're hearing a warrant that was signed by Judge Barbie. He found probable cause for one count of trespassing. State that something you can resolve today? No. Okay, okay. Uh, so, Larry, you plan to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Um, I guess I'd have to hire somebody. I don't know. Okay. State? Uh, Your Honor, this is, as far as I am aware, his first contact with law enforcement. Okay. There's vic live victims in this case, so it's not a business, it's a home. Okay, okay. Of strangers. Okay. Please tell them no contact. Will do. Okay. Uh, Larry, I've got an address for you on Drake Lane in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes. And how long have you lived there? Fifteen years. Right. You're working these days? No, I'm retired. Okay. I do volunteer work for the American Filipino Association for the homeless. Okay. All right. All right, I'll leave the bond at the uh, $500 condition of the bond, however, is that you'll have no contact uh, with uh, 2065 Alameda Drive or anyone who might be there or anyone who lives there. You understand that? What? What? I mean, what is it? I don't know. I'm sorry. What was that? What happened? I'm telling you not to have any contact with that address or the people that live there. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay. If you have contact and I find out about it, your bond will be revoked and you'll be held in jail without bond. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll have you back in court on the uh, 3rd of June. Very important that you contact your lawyer and tell them about that date, okay? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Hello, sir. What's your date of birth? 82192. Charges uh, driving under the influence. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? Represent myself. Very good. Hey. Uh, one prior from Hillsboro in 2011. One prior DUI arrest. I don't know what the outcome of that was. Yeah, it's on his driving record. No. Uh, all right. Sir, I have an address for you in Dade City. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you been there? Ten years. You working these days? Yes. What do you do? Construction. Okay. All right. Let me set your bond at a thousand dollars. I'll have you back in court on June third. Uh, we'll see you then. All right. Okay. Robert Sears. Robert, what's your date of birth? January 13, 1959. Uh, 
Robert, you're here in a warrant signed by Judge Barbie. He found probable cause for one kind of trespass. What about this one, Steve? I don't know anything about it. Okay. Uh, as to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You can hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender, sir. I'll point the piece. Any history? Um, well, there's a drop domestic just this year. That's the only thing in Florida. There seems to be some out of state from Maryland uh, starting back, you know, 30 years ago. I'll okay. stop in the back. How about that? Okay. The last contact was 2006. Okay. Drug paraphernalia, assault. There's a drop even. Okay. A long time. Okay. Uh, Robert, I have an address for you on Crescent Road in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. And you're at uh, 4606, right? Yes, I am. How long you been there? Seven years. Okay. And is that immediately next door to 4590 Crescent Road? How far away is 4590? That's two doors up, sir. Two doors. Okay. Um, are you working these days? I'm disabled, and so is my wife. Okay. That's a neighbor. Yeah, leave the bond at the $500. Uh, Robert, the con condition of the bond is that you have no contact uh, with Mr. Johnson and 4590 Crescent Road. Now, you, your situation is a little strange in that I su suspect that you have to drive by there or you'll be nearby there because of where your house is. So what I'm specifically telling you is you're not going to flip anybody the bird, you're not going to wave, you're not going to have yes, any sir. contact of any kind with that address. Is that clear? Absolutely. Sir. All right, very good. So I'll have you back in court on the 3rd of June. Uh, make sure you contact the public defender when you get out, all right? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, William Dowell. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, you're on. Uh, what are Mr. Dowell, date of birth? 11-25-79. Mr. Dowell, you're here on a writ of bodily attachment out of Citrus County, which means a, a child support hearing officer and a circuit judge in Citrus determined that you owed some child support. They set a cash purge of uh, 2178. Uh, unfortunately, William, I can't change that because I'm out of county. If you can post that money, you can get out of jail. If you can't post it, uh, Citrus County will have five days to come pick you up. Uh, so you could see a judge in Citrus who might be able to reduce that purge amount for you, all right? May I speak, sir? Pardon me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just paid 36000 to Citrus County. If you, if you look it up in the county clerk's office, I just haven't made it to Citrus or Hernando with my receipts. Okay. I paid 36000 in Citrus and 8000 here in Hernando. Uh, uh, William, I, I don't even, I don't doubt you. The, the problem is I have no authority over your case because it's a Citrus case. And we're in Hernando, so I don't have any authority to change it or do anything with it. It has to, got to get to Citrus County to do something about it. And there's only two ways okay. to get there. One is to pay the 2178, uh, and two is to wait and Citrus will come get you and take you there. So if I pay the 2178, then I'm bonded out. Then you're out, and then I would then I would get up to Citrus again and make sure that all of this is cleared up and you don't get tagged again. Yes, sir, you're on. All right, man. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, Joe, that's all I got. Yes, sir, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Here you tomorrow. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if there's probable cause for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not uh, that a crime has occurred, more likely than not you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent of these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state attorney's office is able to prove the allegations against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. Well, set your conditions of pretrial release this afternoon. That is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit or the warrant which led to your arrest. I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same or whether there will be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be, and if you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest 
I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. I now need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Tell solemnly swear affirm, tell truth, hold truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear a name called, uh, please step forward to the podium. Jamie Boner. Morning, Jamie. What's your date of birth? 9-26-1990. Jamie, the charge is battery being domestic in nature. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You want to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I have private counsel. Very good. State, any history? No, nothing. And Jamie, I have an address for you on Pebble Street in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes. All right. And is Mr. Needles living there currently? No. Okay. And you have a job these days? I'm the director of nursing at the Grand Assisted Living. Okay. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to set your uh, bond at $10. Condition of the bond is that while this charge is pending, You'll have no contact with uh, Mr. Needles. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message, don't contact him through social media. Don't go where he lives, don't go where he works. You don't have any contact of any kind. Any way that you might imagine having contact with him, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond until the charges are resolved. It means no contact even if he wants the contact. So if you answer your phone and hear his voice, you should hang up if you're out and about and see him. You should turn around and run the other way. You need to understand that uh, he cannot drop the charges against you. That's not a decision he'll be allowed to make. Uh, he may go to the state attorney's office and ask them to drop the charges, but that decision belongs solely to the assistant state attorney handling your case. So unless that person or the judge in your case or your lawyer tells you the charges are dropped, you should assume they're not dropped and you should not have contact. In addition, I do have to hold you today up until 4 p.m. so that if he wanted to serve you with a civil injunction for protection against domestic violence, we'd know where to find you. If you get the civil injunction, uh, it's doubly important you not have contact because in that case, not only could you get your bond revoked here, but you could get new charges for violating the injunction. I'm going to have you back in court on the 3rd of June. Very important that you mention that date to your lawyer when you hire him, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Sean Ledbetter. Morning, Sean. Date of birth? 2-20-83. Sean, I've got three charges today. I've got two counts of violation of injunction, one count of criminal mischief. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire uh, private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. Sorry. I'll point the PD. State. Your Honor, he has a... 2013 dealing in stolen property in Galton photo pawnbroker. Um, he did go to prison for three years on that. There's a 2018 grand theft. Um, I didn't look up. He didn't go to prison for that, I don't believe. There was a 07 felony criminal mischief. Ag assault with a weapon without intent to harm. Uh, also went to prison. He was released August 12th of 15. Other than that, in 19, there's a misdemeanor drug license suspended and several Marchman type Baker issues. Okay. Sean, are you working these days? No. How long has it been since you worked? Uh, since my folks got a restraining order on me. Okay. Yeah, I think the victims are his parents. Yep. Okay. All right, I'm going to set your bond uh, at 500 on each of the three counts. That's a total of 1,500 with the condition that you have no contact with your folks. You heard me explain no contact, right? Yeah. And you understand that? Yep. And, and, and that further means not going within 500 feet of their residence, okay? Yeah. All right. I'm going to have you back in court on the 3rd of June. Make sure you contact the PD if you get out, okay? Sure. Thank you. William Price. Want to William, what's your date of birth? Uh, 12, 1970. 
Wait, I've got three charges today. I've got uh, driving under the influence, refusal to submit, and driving on a suspended license. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? No, sir, I'd like the public defender. Very good. I'll point the PD, State. Well, Your Honor, I'm going to assume shortly there is going to be a BOP warrant for him okay. on 21CT1901. He's on probation for DUI with property damage. Um, other than that, he, I know he does have some history, Your Honor, because of that BOP's comment. Okay. And William, we got an address for you on Kibler Lane in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yeah. That's how, it. how long have you been there? Uh, 20, 22 years now. All right. And are you working these days? Yeah. Uh, Daniel Construction. Okay. So uh, on the DUI and the refusal, I'll leave the bonds at a thousand. On the driving on suspended, I'll set at two thousand. That's a total of four. Since you're currently on probation, probably before the end of this week, I'll be signing a violation of probation warrant uh, that that will have no bond as on it. So if you spend money bonding out on these, you're going to get eventually rearrested on the VOP, and you could be out that money. I'm not telling you you can't bond out. I'm just letting you know that that's the case. I'll have you back on these charges on the 3rd of June. Uh, very important if you do bond out that you contact the public defender, all right? Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Huh? It's nice to know. Thanks, man. What are you, new? <coughs> wow, she did it. Just throw Joanna under the bus. She might be listening, you know. Wouldn't want to be him. I wouldn't want to be him. So there they are. Well, that's, that's in jail. Do we have to, we have to let the interpreter know? Yep. We're ready. And, Hey man, how you doing? All right, we got. Well, wait a second for the interpreter, right? Do you want to take care of Montgomery for a week for the interpreter? Yeah, sure. We're just recalling, right? Is, is it might be a PD case. Is, uh, yes, Your Honor. It's uh, Wayne Montgomery. It's 22 with him, and then 883. Or 886. I'm sorry. Right. And he's got two charges in that case. One's driving while license suspended. One's possession of paraphernalia. Right. If we get our plea not guilty in that case, then it's for pretrial. Very good. Uh, so I'll recall the capias from before. If there was in a street trial, I'll set that aside. We'll have Wayne back on the 16th of June for a pretrial conference. All right? And, Your Honor, in his other case, 22 CT 480, it's set for pretrial conference on the 17th on the other docket. The 17th of this month? Yeah. Let's Please. just move that also to the 16th of June so he doesn't have double court dates. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks. Thank Bye. you so much, sir. Sorry about your time. You bet. Bye. Respond me. There's now she doing it? Yeah, she did. I can't wait to. 
Okay, I'll call the last case on the traffic down here. Anna Brown, how are you? Yes, Ray. Hope to stay with you. I am well, thank you. This is Mr. Villarreal. Villarreal? Villarreal, yes. V I L A R R E A L. Villarreal. Right. He has been charged with clean to elude and no valid driver's license. There's, prob there's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, does he want to represent himself, hire private counsel, or would he like the public defender? Point the public defender to represent. Uh, I have an address for him on Bull Road in Dade City. Is that where he currently lives? No. Where do you live now? Are you a, uh, do you have a job these days? And then, uh, Miss Yeager, any significant kids? I know he's got the Pasco case, but any history aside from that? He has a bit of history, Your Honor. He's been deported at least twice. Okay. Do we do we know at the jail is there uh, is there an ice hold on Mr. Villarreal? And that's okay, that, but that's obviously a possibility. So I'll leave his bonds for the schedule, which is five thousand on the fleeing and one thousand on the driver's license. We'll have him back in court on June 7th. If he's not able to bond out, his attorney will come see him at the jail. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anna. Oh, yeah, it's uh, A D E L A I D O. Okay, very good. Thank you. Bye now. All right, good morning, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if there's probable cause for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred and more likely than not that you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me today, I presume that you're innocent of these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until 
the state attorney's office is able to prove the charges against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this morning. That is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule. Here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit or the warrant which led to your arrest, I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same, or whether there will be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be. If you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this morning. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. And I need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. You all saw me swear firm, tell truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, you can step forward. Jennifer Eubanks got me. Morning, Jennifer, what's your date of birth? 12-15-84. Jennifer, the charge grand theft. There's probable cause for that charge. As to that charge, you wish to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? The public defender, please. I'll appoint the PD. State any history. She has dealing and stolen property from 2017. And that's all I see. All right. Jennifer, I have an address for you on Weeping Willow Street in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Uh, about eight months. All right. Are you working these days? Uh, Self-employed. What, what do you do? I have to clean houses, clean, oh, clean. Okay. Custodial. All right. I'll set your bond at $500. I'll have you back in court on the 24th of May. Very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa Kincaid. Sorry. Morning, Ms. Kincaid. What's your date of birth? 882. All right. Ms. Kincaid, you're hearing a warrant that was signed by Judge Scaglione. He found probable cause for one count of a burglary of a conveyance with a battery. There's probable cause for that charge then. So as to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? Katie. I'll appoint the, the PD. PD. State. I have an address for you on Crowell Road in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you been there? Mm, almost, almost a year. All right. Are you working these days? Um, I, I stay at home with my autistic son. Okay. Uh, Melissa. It's an outside call. I'm going to set your bond, Melissa, at $10,000. Condition of the bond is that you have no contact with Ms. Sauls. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message. You don't contact her uh, through any social media. Don't go where she lives, don't go where she works, don't have a third person contact her. Any way that you might imagine contacting her, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond until the charges are resolved. I'll have you back in court on the... 25th, is that right? We've been using the 24th all week. On the 24th of May, uh, if you bond out, make sure that you see the public defender right away, okay? Thank you. Alyssa Powell.
What I miss? What's your date of birth? October 19th, 1990. Uh, listen, this is a probable cause arrest for a violation of probation. There is probable cause for the VOP. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD. Bond, of course, is no bond. I'll have you back in, in court on the 24th of May. Public defender will come see you before that, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Shamar Cromwell. Want to start with your date of birth? August 30th, I have three charges today, possession of hashish, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? PD. I'll point the PD. No, Your Honor. Nothing. Uh, young man, I have an address for you on Springhaven Loop. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long you been there? About four years now. All right. And are you working these days? Yes, sir. I work at Temple Bill. Okay. All right. On the hash, I'll set the bond at 1000 On the marijuana and paraphernalia at 500 That's a total of 2000 We'll have you back in court on the 24th of May. Make sure you reach out to the public defender when you get out, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Christopher Goodfellow. Hi, Chris. Date of birth? January 16, 1980. All right. So, Chris, now we have these, this warrant uh, out of Pinellas County for the two counts of conditional release violation. So the, the Pinellas County judge set that at no bond. We give Pinellas five days to come get you so you can uh, get this squared away in Pinellas County, all right? Okay, um, what about, um, I'm on probation too. Well, that they'll have to, you're on probation out of Pinellas uh, uh, County? Uh, no, here. Okay. Well, that's, that will be determined by the probation officer that you have. But for now, all I can tell you is they got this warrant in Pinellas, and you, you'll be there in the next couple of days, all right? Okay. All right. Um, I got to pay the bondman, like 300 too. Yeah. Oh, there are blue water. Well, there's, I don't know about that. Uh, but I know the warrant, this warrant is no bond, so you can't get out until you get in front of a judge in Pinellas County. So that's the next thing we're going to do is have Pinellas come and get you and get you in front of a judge in Pinellas, okay? Okay, in five days? Five days. To the, I give them five days to come get you. That should be quicker than that even, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks, Chris. All right, stop. Andre Mills. Hold on, Andre, what's your date of birth? 9-30-77. Uh, Andre, you're hearing a warrant signed by Judge Helis, apparently for failing to appear on a no-valid driver's license. State, is this something he can resolve this morning? Um, the, uh, Judge, he has a lengthy history, so if he wants to resolve it, we could, it would not be something he probably wants. Okay. Well, I, I, we could use that on 29th. Well, uh, it's a secondary misdemeanor, so oh, you can sorry. do 60. 60 days. All right. Andre, I'm guessing you don't want to do 60 days on this? 60 days? Oh, shit. I, I, I almost got it in, so. I'm sorry, Andre. I didn't almost, understand you. I almost have all the time in, so. Oh, really? We could, we could run it. Yeah. Where have you been in jail? In Pasco? Yeah. How long were you in jail down there? I did, uh, I did about 20, 24 out there, and, you know, it's like I've been arrested for the same charge, like, here and there. It looks like three um, times at least on this one. Yeah. That's all I've been arrested for is this charge right here because it's okay. uh, hard to get back and forth. Okay. Can we, uh, at, at the jail, can we confirm how much time Andre was in Pasco or Craig? Is that something you can get to? Okay, hang on, Craig's got it. Hang on a second, Andre. Okay. Because he must have probably got six or seven here. Yeah, there's a, there's, it looks like from the 21st to the 28th, the most recent one. And then the one before that was eight. Back in 2020, is this a... This is a 2020. 339 CP. All right, he's a 
guys are showing from 12, 15, 20, 20 to 1, 1. So that'd be another 17 days. Plus the 80s, about 25. 25. Plus whatever he's got here. Here, there, there. That's good. Everything else before that's 2019. Okay. Get my computer to work. All right, so Andre, if you wanted to take the 60 today, I've got you uh, with 29, which would mean you'd have 11 left to do. I'll take that. All right. You understand by entering a plea today? That's right, right? 21. 21. 21. That's because 60 is 50. Oh, 21. 21 days, Andre. You still want to do it? Yes, sir. Uh, you understand by entering a plea today, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, the right to remain silent, the uh, right to have a lawyer, but you want to give up those rights so we can take care of this today? Yes. Case number 20 CT 339 asks to charge a no valid driver's license. How do you wish to plead? You can plead no contest. No contest. Accept that plea. Find it was freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to 60 days with credit for, what do we say, 29? 29. 29 days served. Find a court cost is 450. Um, I won't order coin since you're going to do the bulk of the time out of county. So that takes care of it. You get about three three weeks left, Andre, and this is over. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan Pafero de la Rosa. Or is, is that my interpreter case? I don't even know. Morning, sir. What's your date of birth? Oh, two oh six oh three. Uh, three charges today, Jonathan, uh, possession of hashish, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia. As to those charges, you want to there's probable cause, you want to represent yourself, you want to hire a private counsel, would you like a public defender? I'm PD. All right, PD, state? No private defender. Okay. All right, and Jonathan, I got an address for you on Locker Drive in Spring Hill, is that where you live? Yes. How long have you been there? Five years now. All right, are you working these days? Yeah, I work at Carabas on 50. Okay. Set your bond on the hash at 1500 on the other two charges for a total of 2000 Have you back in court on the 24th of May. Make sure you get with the PD when you get out, all right? All right, thank you. Thank you. Zachary Westendorf. All 
On Zach, what's your date of birth? 07-31-2003. Zach, you got four charges today. There's a fleeing to elude and a reckless driving, uh, operating an unregistered motor vehicle, and failure to have your motorcycle endorsement. There's probable cause for those four charges. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself, you're going to hire private counsel, would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD, state. I don't see any prior PD. All right, and Zach, I have an address for you on Clarendon Court in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long do you live there? Only like a month. All right, are you working these days? Yes, sir. What do you do? Uh, I work at Publix. Okay. All right. On the fleeing and the reckless, I'll set the bond at 500 each. On the two other misdemeanors at ROR, your total is 1,000. Uh, I'm going to have you back in court on the 24th of May. Very important that you reach out to the public defender when you get out, all right? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. And then... Uh, Heriberto de la Cruz. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. Sean Barkley. Morning, Sean. What's your date of birth? 61375. Sean, you're here in a warrant signed by Judge Tonery. Found probable cause for a violation of probation. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD. Judge Toner set your bond at no bond. I can't change that. I'll move you to the 19th of May. That's his docket. Public defender will come see you before you go to court, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Joseph Condren. Morning, sir. What's your date of birth? 12-25-1980. So the uh, charge is battery being domestic in nature. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD. State. So don't see any All right. And Joe, I have an address for you on Hickory Street in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. Uh, how long have you lived there? Four months. All right. And does Cookie live there? No. No, she doesn't. Okay. All right. Are you working these days? Yes, I have a property management business. Okay. You work for yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, I will set your, Joe, I'll set your bond at $500. Condition is that you have uh, no contact with Cookie while this charge is pending. Did you hear me explain no contact earlier? Yes, sir. You understand that? Yes, sir. Very good. Have you back in court on May 18th. Make sure you check with the PD when you get out, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Robert Cunningham. Want to start with your date of birth? 41586. Robert, you're here on a warrant that was signed by Judge Toner. He found probable cause for a violation of probation. As for that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, PD. I'll point to PD, State. Oh, it's a, no bond. Uh, Judge Toner set your bond at no bond. I can't change that, Robert. We'll have you back in front of Judge Toner on the 19th of May. Public defender will come see you before that, all right? All right. Thank you. Joe Cothard. Morning again, Joe. Date of birth? 7 11 81. All right. So this is a warrant out of uh, Sumter County. The judge that signed the warrant uh, thinks you failed to appear on uh, four charges. I got possession of meth, resisting without, possession of paraphernalia, and driving on a suspended. Uh, the total bond is 9000 If you can post that bond, then you can go over to Bushnell and find out when they need you in court. If you can't post it, Sumter will have five days to come grab you, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. And then 
And is Stephen Yeager in custody? Yeah, I believe so. Stephen Yeager there? Yes, sir. Craig Crowley, Mr. Yeager. All right, and what are we doing? Um, Mr. Yeager has a BOP for battery. I believe the recommendation for the same 120 days. Right. And uh, the credit for time served between Hernando and Pinal appears to be 89 days. Okay. I believe Mr. Yeager was going to admit to the violation. All right. So, Mr. Yeager, you want to admit a violation? I'd give you 120 days with credit for 89, uh, which would give him 11, yes, 11 left to do. Yes, sir. All right. Stephen, you understand by entering an admission, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, or trial to the court, the right to confront the witnesses against you. But you want to give up those rights so we can take care of this today? Absolutely. Case number 21MM50, do you admit that you violated your probation? Yes, sir. I'll accept the admission, find it was freely and voluntarily made, revoke and terminate the probation unsuccessfully, adjudicate you guilty of the underlying charge. If we didn't do that, sentence you to 120 days in the county jail, credit for 89 served. It's $100 cost of prosecution for the state, $100 for the PD, and, you, and he did a lot of it out of county, right? I won't order Thanks, a corn today because most of the time was out of county. Uh, but that takes care of it, Stephen. Like I said, it looks like about 11 days left to do. Yes, sir. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. All right. And then, Joe, I'll get that Zoom up. Mm -hmm. Wait for the interpreter. Did, did he already post bond on the burglary? Good morning, Sandra. Good morning. Uh, Sandra, this is uh, Heriberto de la Cruz. Heriberto de la Cruz. And, sir, what's your date of birth? Senor, ¿cuál es tu fecha de nacimiento? Agosto 9, 1974. August 9, 1974. And, Mr. de la Cruz, I have a warrant for you out of Pinellas County. Senor de la Cruz, tengo una orden de arresto de the judge that signed the warrant believes you failed to appear on a charge of loitering and prowling. Senor, 
confiar en lugares públicos. And that judge set your bond at $513. Ese juez puso una fianza para usted de $513. I don't have any authority to change that bond. Yo no tengo autoridad para cambiar esa fianza. So you, if you can post that bond, then you can go to St. Petersburg and find out when they want you in court. Entonces, si usted sale libre de su confianza, usted puede ir a St. Petersburg y eh, ir a la corte para ver cómo se toma esto. If you're unable to post that bond, I would give the uh, folks in Pinellas County five days to come and pick you up. Entonces, uh, si usted no puede pagar la fianza, le diría a las personas, las autoridades en Pinellas, que tienen cinco días para recogerlo a usted. Any questions? Unfortunately, it's, it's a, an out-of-county warrant. All I can do is tell you we have the warrant, and, and it's been confirmed, and you have to go to Pinellas to clear it up. Thank you. Thank you. He, he pawned it out on that. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Sandra. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if probable cause exists for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred and more likely than not you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent to these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state attorney's office is able to prove the charges against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release today, that is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit of the warrant which led to your arrest. I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same, or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be, and if you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me if you say something that tends to incriminate you. They will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. And I need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Y'all solemnly swear or affirm, tell truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, you can step forward to the podium. Laura Harris. Afternoon, Ms. Harris. What's your date of birth? 9-4-1979. Uh, so I've got two warrants for you. They were both signed by Judge Scaglione. In each case, he found probable cause for one count of felon in possession of ammunition or a firearm. Uh, as to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? I guess I need a public defender until I can speak with my mother. I think she's going to maybe hire an attorney. But okay. I okay. I'll appoint the public defender for now. State any history? Yes, Judge. So she has the battery. And uh, Laura, I have an address for you on Broad Street in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Since the first of the year. Are you working these days? I'm disabled. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to uh, leave the bonds for the warrant. That's 50000 on each count. Also conditioned that if you bond out, you're subject to GPS monitoring at your expense. I'll have you back in court on the 24th of May. Uh, if you get out, you should contact the public defender. If you can't get out, they're going to come see you uh, before you go to court, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Tania Horn. Afternoon, ma'am. What's your date of birth? 8 24 
you're hearing a warrant, ma'am, signed by Judge Vergara. She found uh, probable cause for one count of child neglect. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? Um, I need a public defender until I talk to my significant other about a lawyer. Okay, I'll appoint the public defender, Steve. Yes, Judge, she has a battery from 2009. She has a resistance to the And ma'am, I have an address for you on Simona Avenue in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Oh, almost two years. All right. Are you working these days? Uh, yes, I do. What do you do? I'm a delivery driver for FedEx. Okay. Uh, we set your bond at $5,000. Condition is that you'll have uh, contact with your son only pursuant to whatever conditions or terms the Department of Children and Families arranges for you. I'll have you back in court on the 24th of May. If you get out, it's very important that you contact the public defender, okay? Okay, will Thank do. You. Thank you. Matthew Aragon. Matthew, Matthew, what's your date of birth? 6-9-2000. Um, so Matthew, I got a new charge today of possession of marijuana with intent. It looks like you were on probation in both Hernando County and Pasco County. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So there's probable cause arrest for violation of those probations. There's probable cause for all these charges. As to these charges, uh, Matthew, you plan to, as to the local charges, you plan to represent yourself. You can hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I'm going to have a private counselor, but... I don't think he's present today, so I'll take a public defender. I'll appoint the public defender. I'm going to leave the bond on the new charge um, at $5,000 per the schedule. On the VOP, of course, the bond is no bond. Both of those cases are going to come back on the 24th of May. And if you don't hire private counsel, the public defender will come see you before you go to court. On the count that came out of Pasco County, that's also no bond. Uh, what will happen with these cases, Matthew, is well, you'll have to get the local cases resolved first. Once you get those resolved, then they'll get you to Pasco County to get that one resolved, all right? Okay. Yeah. Right. That's it. Thank you. Ronnie Bartley? Yes, sir. Afternoon, Ronnie. What's your date of birth? About 1688. So, Ronnie, I have uh, two warrants for you out of Sumter. They're both failed to appear warrants. One has three counts. The other has four counts. The judge or judges that uh, sign these warrants set your bond at no bond. I have no authority to change those. So we'll let Sumter know you're here and ready to go. I'll give them five days to come and pick you up, okay? Sir, I have reason to believe this is a clerical error because my four days down until May 17th. Okay. I'm out of bond. Well, well the, the issue with the clerical error is that it's in Sumter County, not here. So I've got a valid warrant. It says no bond, and you're going to have to go to Sumter to get it cleared up, okay? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. Laveris Bates. Afternoon, Mr. Bates. What's your date of birth? February 19, 2003. All right. This is a violation of probation warrant that I signed. I found probable cause for the VOP. Uh, Mr. Bates, the folks at probation are recommending we... Uh, terminate your probation and have you two ten days in the county jail. Is that something you're interested in doing? No, sir. Um, I really wanted to tell you straight up for myself that I, I end up getting a job. I can make that payment today if you have let me release, like gave me a, a bond or something. Okay. All right. I think the bigger issue, Mr. Bates, is that you stopped reporting. Um, the only reason why I had that was the only reason why I was going through that is because I was having money problems and issues, and I was trying to get caught up on all my schoolwork okay. because I was failing. Well, Mr. Bates, nobody but, nobody on misdemeanor probation goes to jail for not having money. They go to jail for not reporting. Okay, if you're reporting, uh, you're never going to wind up in jail. So that you know, I'm I'm sure that somebody at probation told you that. And they yes, haven't sir. seen you since before February. And, that, and that's why you're standing me. where you're at. So, State, does he have any history besides this? No. 
Any adult history? Is that pending? That, uh, no. <laughs> Mr. Bates, are you on probation on a felony case? A felony case? Yeah. No, no I shouldn't be. <laughs> the interesting answer. That's interesting. So it's sort of nowhere right now? No, he's Hmm. And what are you doing for work? Okay. I work for a car wash company. Okay. Okay. Tell you what I'll do. Uh, I will, uh, and you say you can make this payment very quickly, right? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to set your bond at $500. I'm going to have you come back and see me on May 18th. That's, okay. uh, what is that, 20 days from now. Uh, if you have a zero balance, then you're probably not going to jail, okay? All right. All right, get busy. See you on the 18th. Yes, sir. Robert Cooper. Mr. Cooper, date of birth? 1475. Mr. Cooper, you're hearing a warrant signed by Judge Toner. He found probable cause for violation of probation. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll point the PD. The bond on that warrant is no bond. I can't change that. I'm going to change your date to May 19th. Public defender will come see you before then. All right, Robert? Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Brian Dibble. Afternoon, Brian. What's your date of birth? 11-13-95. Brian, the charge is one count of uh, battery being domestic in nature. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll point to PD, State. address for you on Marblewood Road in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you lived there? Two weeks. Is that where Haven lives? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Do you have a job these days? Yes, sir. What do you do? I work for Pepsi. Okay. I'll set your bond, uh, Brian, at $500. Condition of the bond is that while this charge is pending, you have no contact with Haven Wilson, no contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message, don't contact her through social media, don't go where she lives, don't go where she works. You don't have any contact of any kind. Any way that you might imagine having contact with her, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond until the charges are resolved. It means no contact even if she wants the contact, so if you answer your phone and hear her voice, you should hang up. If you're out and about and see her, you should turn around and run the other way. You need to understand that she cannot drop the charges against you. That's not a decision she'll be allowed to make. She may go to the state attorney's office and ask them to drop the charges. She may tell them she has no interest in pursuing this matter. But that decision belongs solely to the assistant state attorney who will be handling your case. 
So unless that person or the judge on your case or your lawyer tells you the charges are dropped, you should assume they're not dropped and you should not have contact. In addition, I have to hold you today up until 4 p.m. So if she wanted to serve you with a civil injunction for protection against domestic violence, we'd know where to find you if you get the civil injunction. It's doubly important you not have contact because in that case, not only could you get your bond revoked here, but you could get new charges for violating the injunction. As far as the home on Marblewood is concerned, as long as Haven is staying there, you'll have to find somewhere else to go until we get this case resolved. You can go by one time to uh, grab your things, your clothes, your toothbrush, whatever you need for wherever you plan to stay. To accomplish that, however, you must contact the sheriff's office first. They'll meet you there with a deputy who will stand by while you get your things and get going where you're going. I'm going to have you back in court on May 24th. Very important that when you get out, you contact the public defender's office right away, okay? Sir. Very good. Thank you. Chris Goodfellow. Yes, sir. Hi, Chris. Date of birth? Uh, January 16, 1980. All right. So, um, just went Chris, forward, Chris, like Chris, 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 wait, 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 wait. Don't say anything, okay? Okay. okay, you know I'm not going to steer you wrong. Just, just hang on. Let's get this sorted out, okay? okay. Thank okay. you. So, um, State, just I, I don't know if you looked at this, um, but Chris uh, had a no-contact order based on a charge out of Pinellas County. Uh, the no-contact order relates to a young lady that he's been involved with for over a decade. I've seen them on yeah, multiple well, occasions, okay? So whatever, whatever has happened, the no-contact order came out of Pinellas, but they're both Hernando County residents. It happened here. I think it's a charge that should be here for violation of the no-contact. My paperwork is sort of a combination of things. I, I think, I, and what I plan to do is find probable cause for one count of violation of condition of pretrial release and put it on my docket. Yes, sir, but does he have the in Pinellas? I, I, I'm not sure what's going on with the Pinellas case, and and they they're aware because he had a prior violation in Pinellas that resulted him in having a GPS monitor on, which is which is why they knew about it and contacted us here in Hernando County. Okay, so Chris, are, are you still are you staying in in Hernando County someplace? Yes, I am. Okay, and where's that? Right behind the uh, auto zone. Okay. Are you working at all these days? Yes, I'm working at Popeye's Chicken. Okay. Commercial work on 19, commercial way. Okay. All right. So um, I'll, I'm going to appoint the public defender for you, okay? Okay. Um, I'm finding probable cause for one count of condition of pretrial release violation. Um, okay. Chris, I can't, I can't do anything about that GPS monitor you have, okay? If Pinellas County ordered okay. that, you're probably stuck with that. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance, but you've got to understand you can't go anywhere near Lori, okay? I promise. Okay, not not on the same block. You with me, brother? No. Okay. No. Find someplace else to be, okay? Because uh, you know this will only get worse. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to have you back. I'm gonna, we're going to call it May 18th, okay? May 18th. May 18th, right. in front of me in courtroom B. You remember where my courtroom is, right? Yeah. Okay. And no contact with Lori, and I'll see you on the 18th, and we'll figure out what we do next, okay? Okay, so I get released today? You're, you're, you're released as far as I'm concerned. You may have to arrange okay. for the GPS again. Okay, thank you. All right. Robert Harrington. After Robert, date of birth. 12, 12, 2000. Robert, the charge is uh, possession of marijuana of intent. There's probable cause for that charge. Yes to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, public defender. I'll appoint the PD and state he's got an open felony, right? He, he does, Judge. I've asked his bonds to be revoked the felony. So, so Robert, uh, as to this charge, I'm going to set a bond of $5,000. I'm going to leave it on the 24th of May uh, for an arraignment. However, uh, it appears to me that you are out on bond on a felony case. Job number one when you're out on bond is don't pick up new criminal charges, as it appears that you have, pursuant to Florida Statute 903.0417. Uh, 
I'm going to revoke your pretrial release in 22 CF 436. Uh, so you'll be without bond on that charge. State, can I can I move the old charge up to the 24th of May so they both get in front of Judge Merritt since he's on no bond? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Robert, I'll move that. The other case, which currently is set for June 23rd, I'm going to move that up to the 24th of May so that Judge Merritt, if he wants to revisit your bond situation, can do that, and that way you're not sitting in jail till the end of June, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Craig Lycan. <coughs> Afternoon, Craig. What's your date of birth? 0829 Craig, you're here on a warrant signed by Judge Merritt. Apparently, uh, he thinks you failed to appear in his course in a couple of cases. I got a battery second, battery second, two, two batteries. Uh, did you have a, a lawyer representing you on those cases, Craig? I believe I did with the public defender's office. All right. We'll, we'll continue the appointment of the public defender. Uh, Judge Merritt has asked me to hold you without bond, so I have to do that. I'm going to change your date to May 12th. Uh, so I have both of these back on May 12th. The public defender will come see you at the jail before you go to court, all right? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gary Mochnik. Afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? 4-14-52. Gary, you're hearing a probable cause arrest for a violation of probation. There is probable cause for that. VOP, as to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? I'll retain private counsel. Very good. Bond on that warrant is, of course, no bond. I'll have you back in court on May 24th. Make sure when you speak to a lawyer, you tell them about that date, okay? Say again, sir. May 24th. Make sure you tell your lawyer about that date. Will do. All right. Montrell Morgan. Hey, no, sir. Afternoon, Montrell. Yeah. Date of birth? March 24th, 1999. Montrell charged possession of marijuana with intent. There's probable cause. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, I'd be a public defender for now. Very good. I'll point to PD State. You said what? I asked the state about your history, Montrell. Hang on. I do not see. I do not see Okay. Montrell, uh, I got an address for you on Spring Haven Loop. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? A long time. All right. You working these Decade. days? I was working at least many. Okay. Montrell, since you're about at $1,000, we're going to have you back in court on the 24th. Very important that you contact the PD when you get out, okay? Yes, sir. Very good. Joseph Moses. I'm doing Joe, what's your date of birth? 12, 12, 86. Joe, I've got a warrant for you signed by Judge Scaglione. He found probable cause for two counts, grand theft of a motor vehicle and driving on a suspended license. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Hire private counseling. Very good. State any history? Yes. Trespass from 2005. They resist. I can't believe that. They resist without violence from 2005. And DUI from 2007. Fleeing to elude a secondary felony from 2007. Resist officer with violence from 2010. Could I, could I beat out to you? Hang on a second. Disorderly conduct from 2010, introduction of contraband ban from 2011, contempt of court violation for stalking from 2016, resist without violence from 2016, um, harass or cyber stalking from 2017. Right, that, that's good. That's good. Joe, I've got an address for you on Gypsy Avenue in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, Your Honor. How long you been uh, there? Last five years. Okay. Are you working these days? No, I'm not working right now. Okay. All right. You were about there's to ask no, me a question. What was your question? There's no way that I could take two years' paper. No, I can't. So, so Joe, you're just at first appearance today, 
uh, and I'm just a hardworking county court judge. They don't let me take pleas on important cases like this. Uh, so all I can do is set you a bond and give you a lawyer, and, and they'll come talk to you, all right? All right. The all bonds right. are five and five, right? Five Their bonds are two and two. I'm going to set them at 2,000 and 2,000. Uh, we'll have you back in court on the 24th of May. If you're able to get out, contact the PD. If you can't get out, they're going to come see you, all right? Thank you, Your Honor. You bet, man. And Nathaniel Hines. Afternoon, sir. Date of birth? 7778. Nathaniel, you're here on a writ of bodily attachment out of Union County. That means a child support hearing officer and a circuit judge determined that you owe some child support. They set a cash purge of 1770. Uh, if you had that much cash, then you could pay that purge, and that would take care of Union County. If you can't pay it, uh, we'll have to have Union County come and get you so you can go up there and deal with this there, all right? Uh, okay. I have, whoa. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I've, been, I've been incarcerated since December 19th. Do, yeah, yeah, but not on this. Are you, are you at coming to the end of a sentence or something? Yes, sir. When's your EOS? I believe it's supposed to be Saturday, sir. Okay, so so they'll let Union County know right away so that they come and get you ASAP as you get to EOS so you can get up there. What the judge up there will do is reduce this number or give you time served or something like that. Uh, but I can't do it here, unfortunately. you got to get to Union County to take care of it, okay? Wow, okay. All right, man. Thank you. So there's no percentage or anything I can pay? But, yeah, the, see, that I can't change it. That Because, Nate, quite frankly, I'd cut it to ROR if it was a Hernando case, but it's not. And so I don't have any authority over it. you got to go to Union County, and I'm sure the judge there is some other reasonable sort who will understand that you've been in jail, and that's why you're not paying child support. Okay. All right, man. Now, how, how long do they have to pick me? Five days. Five days. All right. Thank you, sir. You bet. All right. And then our last one is on Zoom, right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Pull it up now. Hey, I got no video yet. Citrus County, uh, the, the judge that issued it set your bond at $2,000. Unfortunately, I can't change that. Uh, if you can post the bond, you can get out yourself. If you can't post it, I'll have Citrus come and get you, and I'll give him five days, all right? Oh, no, Tim, I remember the story from yesterday. Uh, I, sadly, that because it's Citrus County, there's just nothing I can do about it. you got to get to Citrus. So keep trying to get a hold of the bondsman. If nothing else, Citrus only has five days to come get you, and it wouldn't take them that long anyway, all right? 
All right. Thank you, Tim. All right. Good luck, Tim. Thanks, Jeff. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I'll determine if there's probable cause for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred and more likely than not you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me uh, this afternoon, I presume that you're innocent of these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state attorney's office is able to prove the allegations against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this afternoon. That is your bail or your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already. Pursuant to the bond schedule here in the 5th Judicial Circuit of the warrant which led to your arrest, I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lower or left the same, or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be. And if you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this afternoon. You do have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel. Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. And I need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. Y'all solemnly swear, affirm, tell the truth, hold truth, nothing but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, please step forward to the podium. Bonnie Bragg. Afternoon, Ms. Bragg. What's your date of birth? Uh, All right, Ms. Bragg, I have uh, two counts of retail theft. There's probable cause for both of those. As to those charges, you wish to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? I'll represent myself. All right. Any history, Steve? Judge, I don't have any um, history on and Bonnie, I have an address for you on Laurel Avenue in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Um, three months, maybe. All right. Do you have a job these days? I do. What do you do? I work at the Bell's Outlet. Okay. All right, Bonnie, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. you got to come back and see me on the 18th of May, all right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Holly Fansler. For Holly, date of birth? 12-22-84. Holly, you're here in a warrant signed by Judge Tonery, found probable cause for a violation of probation. As to that charge, you plan to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll point the PD. Judge Toner set your bond at no bond. I can't change that. I will change your return date to May 19th, and the public defender will come see you before then. All right, Holly? Okay. Thank you. Misty Wynn. Wonder, Misty, what's your date of birth? 5-1-89. Misty, I have uh, six charges today, one count of possession of controlled substance. One count of possession of hashish, three counts possession of a new legend drug without prescription, and one count of possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you wish to represent yourself, you're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD state. Judge, she has a resist without violence from 2019. She has a um, trespass from 2019. A, a petty theft from 2021, a possession of paraphernalia from 2020, driving on a suspended license from 2021, another driving on suspended license from 2021. And that's all I show. All right, Misty, I've got an address for you on Old California Street. Is that where you live? Uh, no, sir. Okay, where do you live now? Um, I don't know the address where I live now because I just moved there, but, um, Can you tell me generally where it is? Um, yeah, by Fort Dade Avenue. In Brooksville. Okay. Are you working these days? No, sir. All right. 
I'm going to set your bond at 1000 on each count. That's a total of $6,000. I'm going to have you back in court on the 24th of May. Very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Zacchaeus Barnes. After Mr. Barnes, what's your date of birth? 2693. Uh, obviously, you're hearing a warrant uh, that I signed because you failed to appear in my court again on a DUI. Uh, Zacchaeus, have you got private counsel on this or you need the public defender? I do have private counsel. All right. <coughs> and I have an address for you on Powder Ridge Drive in Valrico. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long you been there? Uh, 17, 18 years. All right. You're working these days? Yes, sir. What are you doing? Uh, technical support. Okay. All right, I'll leave the bond for the warrant, which is the $20,000. I'll have you back in court on the 11th of May. Make sure you tell your lawyer that date, okay? Thank right. you. Joshua Bauman. And Joshua, what's your date of birth? 4 1987. Uh, Josh, you're here uh, on a warrant I signed for a fail to appear on a possession of paraphernalia. State, is this something he can resolve this morning? Uh, just let me look at his priors. And what, what, I don't know what the original charge was. It's paraphernalia. Oh, paraphernalia. Yeah. Yes, um, and I think he's got a hold in Pasco anyway. Yeah, he can have time served. All right, Josh, you want to take time served on the paraphernalia and get back to Pasco? Yes, sir. All right, you understand by entering a plea today, you give up the right to have a trial by jury, the right to confront the witnesses against you, right to remain silent, uh, right to have a lawyer represent you, but you want to give up those rights so we can resolve this today? Yes, sir. Very good. Case number 22MM581 is the charge to possess drug paraphernalia. How do you wish to plead? You may plead no contest. No contest. I accept that plea. Find it was freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to one day in a county jail. Credit one day served. Fine and court costs is 550 or 575 50 bucks for the day in jail. That takes care of the Hernando case, Josh. If you need to go back to uh, Pasco, you're free to go there, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Raheem Evans. <coughs> Afternoon, sir. What's your date of birth? 2-10-98. Raheem, the charge is exposure of sexual organs. There's probable cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, no. State any history? You said what? Judge, I do, not, I do not see any local district now. Raheem, where do you live right now? Nowhere, I'm sorry. Right. Do you have a job? Not at all. I'll leave the bond at $1,000. I'll have you back in court on the 18th of May. Thank you. All right. Kerwin Howard. Yeah. Afternoon, Kerwin. Date of birth. I don't know, I got a warrant now on a Gilchrist County, uh, one count of uh, sexual battery, two counts of lewd and lascivious, one count of lewd and lascivious molestation. The judge that issued those warrants set your bonds at $500,000, $500,000, $250,000, $250,000 total of $1.5 million. Um, Kerwin, are you done with Hernando County? No, I still got to come to, uh, I got court on the fourth here. Okay. Uh, okay, so well, I'll, I have to leave those bonds per that warrant. Uh, they won't even worry about getting you to Gilchrist until you're finished up here, all right? All right. All right, thanks, man. Sean Kennedy. <laughs> Afternoon, Sean, what's your date of birth? Zero three zero seven uh, sixty two. Charges assault is probable cause for the uh, charge. As to the charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Um, I was going to do it myself. However, I think maybe I should get a public defender. I'll appoint the public defender. Steve. Judge, I'm looking. He has a battery from twenty uh, two thousand and eight. Uh, 
That's all I see, Judge. And, Sean, I have an address for you on Mallard Lake Drive in Brooksville. Is that where you're living? Correct. How long have you been there? I've been there uh, 12 years by myself until they moved in uh, six months ago, my brother and my mother. Okay. And Keith is your brother? Correct. And that's where they're living right now? Correct. All right. Do you have a job these days? I was, uh, no, I'm taking care of my mom. I take her to... to uh, wound care every day. I take it to all of the doctors. I do all the shopping. Okay. I do anything that needs to be done for my mom. So I'm pretty okay. much busy, sir. Okay. Um, John, I'm going to set your bond at $10. Condition of the bond, unfortunately, is that you have no contact with Keith. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call. You don't write. You don't email. You don't text message. You don't uh, send him, contact him through social media. Don't go where he lives. Don't go where he works. You don't have any contact of any kind. Any way that you might imagine having contact with him, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond can be revoked and you can be held without bond until the charges are resolved. It means no contact even if he wants the contact, so if you answer your phone and hear his voice, you should hang up. If you're out and about and see him, you should turn around and run the other way. You need to understand that he cannot drop the charges against you. That's not a decision he gets to make. Uh, he may go to the state attorney's office and uh, tell them he wants the charges dropped, but that decision belongs solely to the assistant state attorney handling your case. Uh, so unless that person or the judge on your case or your lawyer tells you the charges are dropped, I sh you should assume they're not dropped and you should not have contact. In addition, I'm required to hold you at the jail today until 4 p.m., so if you wanted to serve you with a civil injunction for protection against domestic violence, we'd know where to find you. If you get the civil injunction, uh, it's doubly important you not have contact because in that case, not only would you get your bond revoked here, but you'd get a new charge for violating the injunction. And finally, because of uh, the law here in Florida, if Keith stays in your home, uh, you'll have to stay someplace else till we get this resolved. If he goes away, of course, you can go back there, but you, it, the onus is on you. If he does stay there, you can go by one time to collect your clothes, your toothbrush, whatever you need. Uh, but to do that, however, you'd have to contact the sheriff's office uh, who would meet you there with a deputy who would stand by while you got your things and got going where you're going. I'll have you back in court on May 18th. Very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, yep. right? Yes, hi. can I say something? Sure right? can. Okay, great. Um, the house where I'm staying at, I chose to stay outside of the main residence. I live outside. It's not part of the house. It's, it's like 50 feet from... So, so, so Sean, John, you can do whatever you want to do, okay, but just, just hear me out. The, the answer is, if Keith is annoyed and thinks you had contact and drops a dime on you, you could be back in jail without bond. And between you and me and the fence post, um, I, I don't know why you got arrested, okay, but you did. And now where the whole system is going to deal with you like this, I'm just saying, I don't know what's going on with you guys, but if, if he has... Uh, if he has his eye on you and wants to get at you some more, having contact with him would be the way to do it, okay? What, what I was saying was we don't have contact to begin with. I live in a separate, I don't even live in the house. We, for, this four, for the seven months they've been there, we've never had lunch, dinner, or, or anything okay. together. I smoke it. Now I'm saying, but there's like 50 feet from my house to the main house where he and my mom lives. Now, is that... Still, uh, in, uh, 50, 50 feet no, no, no. is too close pursuant to my order, right? My order says 500 say feet. Okay. I didn't, I'm sorry, you I didn't hear the 500. Well, I didn't say it, but that's what the order is going to be, is 500 feet. All right, I'll have you back on the 18th. You got a problem, 10 bucks. Thank you, Zachary Keeger. Sir? Right, Zach, what's your date of birth? 7596. Right. Zach, I have a warrant signed by Judge Vergara. She found probable cause for one count of fraudulent use of a credit card, one count of criminal use of personal identification. I have a second warrant also signed by Judge Vergara. She found probable cause for two counts of burglary of a conveyance. And then I have another fraudulent use of credit card, another fraudulent use of personal identification information, probable cause for all five charges. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself, hire private counsel, or would you like the public defender? Public defender, please. I'll point to BD State. Uh, sir? Hang on a second. Okay. 
as a DUI from 2015, a trespass from 2017, Zach, I have an address for you on Quarter Horse Lane in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Uh, two years. All right. You working these days? Uh, yes, sir. What do you do? I'm in construction. Okay. Is there something else you want to tell me? And, and I'd rather you didn't talk about the facts of the cases, okay? Uh, well, I was just going to I was gonna ask you for either an ROR or a bond reduction. I've been talking with the uh, detectives and trying to be... Okay, well, stop, let's stop right there, stop right there. I'm going to give you a bond reduction. You're not an ROR, but I'm going to give you a bond reduction. I'm going to set your bond at 1000 on each count. That's a total of 5000 bucks. They're all coming back on the 24th of May. When you get out, you want to contact the PD right away, okay? Okay, so that'd be 500 Yeah, if, if you are, uh, so you talk to a bondsman, that's probably correct. All right, thank you, thank sir. Thank you. Yep. John Love. I'm sorry, what was the court date you gave him? 24th. Hunter John, what's your date of birth? 10-20-179. John, the first thing I have is a warrant uh, that I signed. I uh, found probable cause for violation of probation. And then we have a warrant signed by Judge Scaglione. He found probable cause for domestic battery by strangulation, a simple domestic battery, and a witness tampering. And then we have one counter resisting. There's probable cause for all of those charges. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public uh, defender. I'll point the PD. Uh, the bond on the VOP is no bond. I'm not going to change that. So that's going to come back on the 11th of May. They may have told you the 18th. The right date is the 11th. The resisting, I will also leave it 1,000. Uh, point the public defender, but that's going to come back on the 11th of May with the VOP. And then on the felony cases, uh, I'll set the bonds um, at uh, 5,000, 2,000, and 1,000 respectively with the condition that you have no contact with Ms. Vanderveer. Uh, the felony cases are coming back on the 24th of May. Uh, because you're not eligible to bond out, the public defender will come see you at the jail before your court dates, okay? All right. Thank you. Isaiah Martinez. <clears throat> Afternoon, Isaiah, what's your date of birth? September 22nd, 95. Isaiah, you're hearing a warrant signed by Judge Regards. You found probable cause for one count of a burglary of a dwelling with a battery. As to that charge, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? The public defender. I'll appoint the PD, State. We have a... Domestic violence battery from 2015. That's all I have. All right. and Isaiah, I have an address for you on North Gunlock Avenue in Tampa. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? I've been there for about 10 years. All right. Are you working these days? Not at the moment, no. How long has it been since you worked? Uh, it's been about a month. Um, I set your bond at ten thousand dollars. Condition of the bond is that you'll have no contact with Ms. Montgomery. Did you hear me explain no contact earlier? Yes, sir. Did you understand that? Yes, sir. Very good. Have you back in court on the twenty fourth of May? Make sure you contact the public defender if you get out, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Morgan White. Afternoon, Morgan. What's your date of birth? One sixteen eighty one. We're going to have uh, four counts today. I have uh, armed trafficking in meth, possession of marijuana, possession of a uh, new legend drug without a prescription, and possession of drug paraphernalia. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You want to hire private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Uh, I guess public defender right now. All right. I'll point the public defender, Steve. Judge, I don't have a criminal history on camera. Okay. Uh, Morgan, I got an address for you on Carter Road in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? Uh, Forty years. All right. And you have a job these days? Yes, sir. What do you do? 
I do uh, land services. Say it again. Land service work. Okay. Concrete structures and right. stuff like that. Okay. Parking lots. I'll set the uh, the uh, bond on the trafficking at fifty thousand. Uh, on the other three charges at a thousand, so the total is fifty three. I'll have you back May twenty fourth. If you're able to get out, make sure you contact the PD right away. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew Williams. After you, Matthew, what's your date of birth? 1101, Uh Matthew, I have a warrant for you out of Charlotte County. The judge that signed the warrant found probable cause for a grand theft and set your bond at 15000 I'm not allowed to change that. We'll let Charlotte know that you're here uh, and ready to go. If you can post that bond, uh, of course, you can go down to Punta Gorda and find out when they want you in court. If you can't post it, we'll give them five days to come pick you up, all right? Okay. All right, thank you, man. That was Matthew Williams, Judge. Yep. And that leaves me. So, uh, what happened to Terry Robinson? What's that? No. You jail with Terry Robinson there? Because I, I, I don't. I never got paperwork. Yep. Yes, Your Honor. She's here. It's a it's a VOP, right? Yes. Yes, Judge. Yeah. Is it misdemeanor? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. DUI. 120 days. Okay. Uh, Terry, you want to uh, represent yourself and hire private counsel? Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll appoint the PD. Uh, bond is no bond. Coming back May 11th, right? Thank yeah. you. I'll have you back, Terry, on the 11th of May. PD will come see us, see if we can get it uh, uh, worked out before then, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. And then, Joe, are you going to put the Spanish speakers in front of a computer? Yes, All right, thanks. Is she there in the, co in the courtroom? Ms. Garcia? Mm -hmm. What's your date of birth? June 15, 2002. Okay. Uh, so, Ms. Garcia, you're here. Uh, I think it's four charges. I have um, trafficking in heroin, possession of heroin with intent, uh, possession of controlled substance, and uh, possession of a fraudulent ID. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you plan to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Can I get a public defender? Yes, you can. I'll appoint the public defender. State, do we have any history? Judge, I don't have a history. Okay. And, ma'am, I have uh, an address for you in Garland, Texas. Is that where you live? No, I live in Dallas, Texas. Okay. What's your address in Dallas? 8218 Willoughby Boulevard. Okay. How long have you lived there? For a year. Right. Do you have a job these days? Yeah, I work in bottle service at a club. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave your bonds uh, per the schedule, which is 50000 on the trafficking, 20 on the possession with intent, and 5000 on the other two felonies. That's a total of $80,000. i will have you back in court on the 24th of May. If you're able to get out, make sure you contact the PD right away, okay? Okay. Thank you. Juan Carlos. There we go. How are you? ¿Cómo está? Should have uh, a defendant here in a second. His name is going to be Morillo Garcia Torres.
gets here, his charges are trafficking in heroin, possession of heroin with intent, uh, possession of controlled substance, possession of a vehicle for the purpose of trafficking, and unlawful use of a two way communication device. Other than that, nothing serious. Charlie, are you just looking for a withhold on your case? Yeah. Do we know who the deputy is or the yeah. trooper? Yeah, you might ask me up on the Yeah, there's a bridge. Yeah, just run out in the hallway and make sure they're okay with it, and then you can take off. If you got some place to be. Not sure. Oh, yeah. Unlawful use of a two way communication device. There's a probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself? Are you going to hire a lawyer? Or would you like me to appoint the public defender? We can't hear him. He's on mute. Arizona, is that where you live?
to leave your bonds for the bond schedule, which is a total of ninety thousand dollars. If you're able to bond out, you should contact the public defender's office. If you're not able to bond out, the, your attorney will come see you at the jail before you go to court. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thanks, Paul. You too, Bond court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond court to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos.